Ms. Rahman. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I did want to flag for uh, you, um, uh, Council President, that I don't believe the audio is available to the public. So I'm, I'm, I'm not, it, no one can hear it on, on the YouTube link that traditionally people listen into. So I did just want to flag that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Okay. Roman. Should, should okay. we? Uh, it just started. Oh, it Literally just started. As I was speaking, it just started. Okay, you, you, okay. Uh, you made it happen. <laughs> All right, so we're, okay, we're, we're good? Yeah. Okay. And I did have some items to call um, special as well. Okay, and before you do, Ms. Rahman, um, our city attorney has uh, something to add or clarify. Go ahead, sir. So, so I believe we were broadcasting at least on channel 35 the whole time. So um, I'm glad that the YouTube is up, but we're, we're legally okay. So thank, Mr. May, thank you, Ms. Rahman. Thank yeah, you. Sorry, but I, we're just in the office trying to hear it. And, okay. No, um, good to know. Thank you. Uh, please continue, Ms. Rahman. Okay, um, and you continued item 34, is that correct? Yes, we did. Okay, yes. um, I would just like to call item 31 for a separate vote um, and item 24 for comments and an amendment. Um, and I'm happy to read that amendment into the record. Yes, please proceed to read that amendment into the record. Um, so the amendment is instruct the chief legislative analyst with assistance from the city attorney and other city departments as needed to report uh, within 90 days with options for a ballot measure to be prepared for an election in 2024 or sooner to amend the city charter to create independent redistricting commissions for the city and the Los Angeles Unified School District. And thank then you. The, yes, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I will happy, be happy to second that, Ms. Rahman. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, I'd like to make comments on that item as well. And I'd also like to add an amendment to item 41, uh, uh, which yes. is- Yes, please go ahead. Okay. And the amendment is just adding a clause to the, um, to the end of that moving clause, uh, which says, uh, I further move that the city council instruct the CLA with the assistance of the CAO to prepare a report that outlines and sets forth an immediate redistricting process to implement the updated reforms after passage of the above mentioned charter reform ballot initiative. And then the additional languages, which includes potential options for the implementation of new district lines for the 2026 elections or the soonest feasible election cycle. I consider that a very friendly amendment uh, and that shall be accepted. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and we uh, just to reiterate, because you brought to our attention, we are up on YouTube, as you stated. Uh, but just for the record, for everyone to hear, we are up on YouTube. Thank you so much. Now we'll go to Mr. Koretz. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to uh, be sure that uh, item 17 was continued for two weeks. I wasn't sure if that was called yet or not. We will continue item 17 for two weeks, Mr. Koretz. Uh, Mr. Thank President, you. so two weeks would be uh, October, uh, October, uh, actually, it'd be November, f November 1st. So okay. item 17 continue to November 1st. Let the record reflect November 1st for that item. Anything else, Mr. Koretz? No, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Rodriguez. Thank you. Um, I also have a, uh, an amendment for item uh, 24. Uh, yes. So, Okay, uh, I move that the matter of the continued considerations of consideration of rules election intergovernmental relations committee relative to options for a ballot measure for the November 22 ballot to amend the city charter to create an independent redistricting commission and related matters item 22 24 on today's agenda be amended to have the follow to have the council adopt the following in addition to the committee report. One, instruct the CLA to request the Pat Brown Institute to conduct analysis envisioned in the committee report and to report with recommendations within 30 to 60 days. Uh, um, authorize the CLA to negotiate and execute the necessary agreement for the above purpose with the Pat Brown Institute in an amount not to exceed $50,000 
And three, find that the services to be performed by the Pat Brown Institute are for the performance of professional, scientific, expert, technical, or other services of a temporary and occasional character for which competitive bidding is not practical or advantageous, and the work can be performed more economically or feasibly by, an indep by independent contractors than by city employees. Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. And do we have a second? Um, Ms. Rodriguez, I'm happy to second. I just wanted to confirm that this would be additional to the CLA report and would be, yeah. and that the report from the Pat Brown Institute would be considered by the CLA as part of the work. Correct. Right. Okay, fantastic. Yes, happy to second. All right, we have a second by Ms. Rahman. Uh, any other? Yes. Um, Mr. President, I'd like to uh, also request that we continue items uh, 42 and 43 uh, as noted for the purposes of ensuring that the public is able to participate in a public meeting so that these practices are not conducted via Zoom. Are there any objections to this? Yes, I object to that. Mr. Krikorian objects to that. All right, so uh, we now need to take a vote on, uh, on this motion. Uh, to uh, postpone this, um, and um, any, Madam Clerk, uh, can you call, a ro call the roll on the move? Uh, yeah, but, yeah uh, Ms. Rodriguez, I'm so sorry. Did you have a, a second on this? We have one objection, and we just need a second for your. And Mr. President, we usually I think we have to continue things to a date certain. So, if Ms. Rodriguez, uh, I realize we. So I, right. So, I'd like to propose a date certain of one week from today when we are able, in light of even Mr. Uh, Harris Dawson's comments about the need for us to have greater transparency, um, I think it's important that we are able to conduct this type of business uh, with the public's presence and participation in a council meeting. And okay. so it's for that reason that I'd like to propose that we postpone this uh, to the date certain of one week from today that, it, that I would expect by then we might be, uh, we wouldn't have uh, the COVID prohibitions that uh, force this conversation to occur over Zoom. Okay. All right, the proposal on the floor is to postpone uh, items uh, selecting the next council president uh, for one week from today. Do we have a second? There is no second, and uh, so that we, we must move on. Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. Uh, any other items uh, before us, colleagues, that you would like to uh, put on the table? No? Seeing as that, without objection, um, the items mentioned are now before us. Um, thank you, members. Are we, we're now able to vote on the items that have not been called special and that have had public comment uh, in committee. Madam Clerk, which items are before us in that category? Mr. President, that would be items 12 through 16, 18 through 23. Thank you. With that, we can, we can now call the roll. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo, absent. De Leon, absent. Harris Dawson. Aye. Hutt. Aye. Correct. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price, absent. Ramen. Yes. Rodriguez. Aye. Uh, that would be 11 ayes. These items are adopted. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, let's move on to the closed session items. Uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, for those items, 
And we can also refer to Mr. Krikorian, uh, yes. the Budget and Finance Chair. Mr. Krikorian. Sorry about that. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, yes, uh, Budget and Finance has considered each of the closed session items on today's agenda. Uh, there are routine matters that can be considered in open session unless members have questions or concerns. And uh, Budget and Finance recommends approval of the City Attorney's recommendations on those matters. Thank you. And Madam Clerk, will you now read the settlement amounts? Yes, Mr. President. Item 44 in the case entitled Amira Sam Mirati versus City of Los Angeles et al., there is a recommendation to expend up to 650000 in settlement. Item 45 in the case entitled Margaret Gottfried versus City of Los Angeles et al., there is a recommendation to reject the plaintiff's offer of settlement. Item 46 in the case entitled Betty Schilling et al. versus City of Los Angeles et al. There is a recommendation to expend up to 280000 in settlement. Item 47 in the case entitled Daniel Turner versus City of Los Angeles et al. There is a recommendation to reject the plaintiff's offer of settlement. Item 48 in the case entitled Frank Preciado versus City of Los Angeles, there is a recommendation to expend up to $1,245,000 in settlement. Item 49 in the case entitled David Williams versus City of Los Angeles et al., there is a recommendation to expend up to $140,000 in settlement. Finally, item 50 in the case entitled Green Leaf Caregivers, there is a recommendation to expend up to $328,377.87 in settlement, which includes the waiver of $147,421.28 in penalties, sir. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Can we please call the roll on these items? Yes, sir. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Sedil, absent. De Leon, absent. Harris Dawson. Yes. Hutt. Aye. Koretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Absent. Ramen. Yes. Rodriguez. Absent. Ten. Ten eyes. These items are adopted, sir. Thank you. Thank you, members. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. We are now ready to move to public comment. Madam Clerk, if you could please read out the call-in information that was also provided on the agenda, and I thank everyone for their patience uh, at this time of uh, the necessity to have this meeting by Zoom. Madam Clerk, please go right ahead. Yes, Mr. President. As indicated on the agenda, Members of the public wishing to offer public comment should call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466, then press pound. Then press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to request to speak. When it is your turn to speak, an automated Zoom voice will ask you to press star 6 to unmute. Let me repeat. Call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466, then press pound. Then press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, press star 9 to, to request to speak. When it's your turn to speak, an automated Zoom voice will ask you to press star 6 to unmute. Thank you, Madam Clerk and Mr. City Attorney. Would you please explain the speaking rules to members of the public calling in? Yes, Mr. President. So to members of the public calling in, when it's your turn to speak, please state which of the agenda items you'd like to speak on. You have one minute per item to speak, up to three minutes total. And if you wish one minute for general public comment, please speak to the items before beginning general public comment. We'll tell you when your time's up. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as, you, as we can. If you're not on topic or if we can't tell whether you're on topic, you'll get one brief warning from me or the president. At that point, you need to immediately get clearly on topic 
If you don't or you again stray off topic, the president will cut you off and you'll forfeit the rest of your speaking time and we'll move on to the next speaker. The items that are open for public comment are items 1 through 11 and 24 through 43. So that's 1 through 11 and 24 through 43. You can speak about any of the other items if you wish during general public comment. For members of the public calling in to speak, when it's your turn, an automated Zoom voice will prompt you to press star six to unmute yourself. If you don't do so, council staff will prompt you once more. At that point, if you don't immediately unmute yourself, unfortunately, you'll forfeit your speaking time and we'll have to move on to the next speaker. Finally, we understand that you may be listening to the council meeting on multiple devices, channel 35 or something. When it's your turn to speak though, please turn down the volume on those other devices uh, right away because the feedback and a time delay between the live meeting and the broadcast, it really causes a great deal of confusion if you're listening on multiple devices. And with that, Mr. President, we and are ready to begin public comment. Thank you, Mr. City Attorney. We're going to have to hold for a moment because we need every member to be visible on the screen to demonstrate that we do have quorum. So if there we go. All right. We are now ready to pay, take a uh, public comment. We can begin. Thank you. Speaker, please press star six to unmute yourself. Speak with the last four digits, 5868. Eight. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you would like to speak on. Public comment. Hi, which items would you like Hello? to speak on? Public comment. Public comment, so you have one minute. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'm asking Kevin De Leon not to resign. He is doing a great job with his real voters in his district. So the outside agitators sleeping outside his house do not represent his district voters. They should all focus on the gangs and the looting in their own districts. Also, also Mr. Mike Bonin is a big, fake crybaby. He should be crying about all the trash, crime, and homeless in his own area, thanks to him. Thank you. Thank you. Speak with the last four digits of 0038. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you would like to speak on. Hi, uh, public comment, and uh, I, I don't have the agenda item in front of me, but with regard to voting for uh, the pro temp or president. Okay, so I think you wanted to speak on, it was probably item 42 and 43 and general. Uh, yeah, as, as, well, as well as general. Yeah. Okay, so we'll give you. Um, two minutes for the items and one minute for general. Um, I won't chime in, you'll hear a buzz when we go into general. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, this is Tenacity. I am just calling here. Uh, I do find it that if there is a need, a uh, urgent need to vote for city council president today, it might as well be Mike Bonin. Um, it, in this in this situation, it's just really uh, seeing how just the pro temper, though he expressed that he has no desire to, you know, um, maintain the role. Just seeing how the the conduct is going is is not going well. And um, I mean, apart from this all being illegitimate, which I'll get to in my public general comment, um, I, I just really feel like any other consideration. I mean right now at this moment. That was one minute time for uh, general? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so uh, while we're here, I think each and every one of y'all know that there are two people who are unwilling to resign and y'all could have all prevented this by just like in letting them know the urgency of the moment by refusing to show up because uh, what you're doing by uh, providing this situation where we have to be re here right now when that is the most number one important matter and it's not being taken care of, we're only prolonging the situation and that's not really serving the district. And so the person who makes, made the first public comment, I just, I, I don't know, like 
to get you some business because everything that you just shared was very harmful, detrimental, and dog whistle. Stop being racist, y'all. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 6099, please press star six to unmute yourself. Please identify the items you would like to speak on. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Loud and clear, yes. Yeah, my name is uh, Marcus Champion, LA resident. I want to speak, uh, make a general comment. Sure, so you have a minute. Please begin. The National Assembly of American Slavery Descendants of Los Angeles demands that Council Members Kevin DeLeon and Gil Tobio immediately resign. We support the calls for a full investigation into hiring practice of the LA CFL in the city of Los Angeles, including city contracting decisions made by these individuals as it relates to the disenfranchisement of the African American community. We also demand that the Department of Justice audits redistricting in Los Angeles to see if there were any voter suppression violations asserted against the American Freedmen community. American Freedmen are encountering unprecedented levels of anti-blackness in all walks of life. To learn that these sentiments not only exist, but are perpetuated, agree with, and acted on with purpose within city leadership is utterly appalling. While we applaud, applaud the growing consensus that these leaders must resign, true solidarity with the black community is supporting transformative policy that will benefit the descendants of persons who fled the United States and American freedmen. And that first commenter was a disgusting racist. Thank you. Thank you very much, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 1148. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you would like to speak on. I'd like to speak on all available items and general public comment, please. Okay, sure. So you have three minutes for items 1 through 11 and 24 through 43, followed by a minute for general. So please begin, Speaker. I have four minutes total. You have four minutes total, but it'll be three minutes for the items and then one minute for general. So I'll let you know when we're going to general, if you wish. Starts now? Yes, we'll restart the clock for three minutes and you can begin now. Thank you, sir. Um, looks like I'll never get that apology from Martinez now, but this is good enough for me. Peace. Um, to my items, the Los Angeles Lazy Council of Corruption is a criminally insane institution of organized crime and nothing more. In addition to the item, take item 25. None of these items should be voted on, actually. Council, this, these people are just criminal. 25, Hutt and Dawson. Hutt, put your name on this. Destination Crenshaw gentrification, ridiculous project, $200 million, stupid outdoor museum, Dawson. And you haven't given uh, African marketplace their permit and funded their, their city fees. We want that funded in full. Ridley Thomas tried to kill it. We don't need an Destination Crenshaw gentrification project. That's all this little corrupt little guy, probably the next to be indicted, Dawson, has done. Destroyed the black community. Funny you put your, your name on first item that we don't need, status quo. But we don't need this kind of crap. The biggest problem for the black community is we have no representation. That's a fact, public. We don't need the Destination Crenshaw Gentrification Project destroying our black community. Well, Ms. Hutt, your name was racist people on that council, Boos Kayanis. 40, a 4118 motion to abuse, criminalize, and remove homeless people. This hut, half the homeless population is black. This hut, 
going to go on the same criminally insane Herb Wesson, Mark Ridley Thomas, Marquise Dawson Road. We don't need you to sit there and use the homeless, Miss Hut. 33, Riggis and Raman, Aces, city owned building, Poima Youth Center versus. I'm opposed to this. Well no, no, well, no, I'm not. But I want to make a contrast. Again, Marquise Dawson's eviction of the black community, 20-year-old. And you can go on general community, if you wish. Community cultural center. These black officials don't want black people in their own community cultural center. Could he have done that to, to the Jewish community? No, I don't think so. This is the type of representation. Yes, Martinez is a hag from hell, but our own black people, we have 20% of the city council, 20% of the county board, only 9% of the population, we're overrepresented. So why are we 50% of the homeless? 50% of black people are unemployed or unemployed. 50% of the jail population. At the same time, given Dawson, $10 million for luxury offices around the city. One move to take the black community's unemployment office, the state EDD at $20,000 a month lease. All of it, including Bonin, has his name on this. All of these corrupt individuals. This is why we have 70,000 homeless people. Thank you, Speaker. We need... Speaker with the last four digits, 1894. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you would like to speak on. Hi, yes, just general public comment, please. Sure, you have a minute. Please begin. Yeah, this is Richie Serjanko from the People's City Council. First off, I want to say fuck Gil Cedillo, fuck Nuri, fuck Kevin DeLeon, fuck this whole shit right here. It's all illegitimate. I'm really fucking pissed off at every public official that stood with us last week in, um, stood with black and brown folks and indigenous folks last week in city council and at protests saying no resignations, no meeting. And the elected officials here who we thought potentially were on our side have attended this meeting and KDL and Gil Cedillo are still on the council. We do not want this meeting to happen. I think I speak for a lot of people in, in hoping that um, Mike Bonin, MHD, Nithya remove themselves from this meeting and break quorum. Um, this meeting cannot happen with KDL and Gil Cedillo in their racist, anti-black, anti-indigenous language. This whole council is illegitimate. And Mitchell Farrell's fucking racist and anti-black too. Thank you, Mr. Sujenko. Next speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 4208. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you would like to speak on. Hi, it's uh, Rob Kwan. I'd like to speak on 24, 41, 42, 43, 36, 340, and uh, 42 and 43. Okay, so you get three minutes for all of those items. And when you're done with that, then followed by a minute for general. So please begin. Thank you. I, I did not hear Council Member Price accuse himself from those LAX items, 36 through 40. I don't know if that's because... Uh, there's not a, a close nexus for a conflict of interest there, but usually he recuses himself from everything there, even if he doesn't properly state his recusal. So I just wanted to flag that before any action is taken on those items. Um, for 42 and 43, I, I do think it's absurd that we're having this in the climate where KDL and Gil are still on this council. Uh, there's a lot of talk about full accountability and healing. Uh, let's keep in mind, current Price had an alliance with Nuri, Kevin, and Gil. He was on their team to protect himself and screw over the last black district, black district in LA. Not only that, he engaged in a desperate mudslinging campaign that tarnished our process, made it uglier, made it nastier. His friend Ben Torres used his network of nonprofits, including Blanca Lucio at Trust South LA, which Ben shares, to organize talking points smearing Coco, Marquise Harris Austin, and Karen Bass. By strong arms, nonprofits in his district and around it, and is signing a letter condemning the redistricting coalition that Coco helped lead and saying that they should be banned from even speaking at the meeting. Banned from speaking at the meeting. 
Many of, the, many of those orgs that lied with current price were handsomely rewarded with contracts not long after that process was completed. Um, just looking at some of the pricing, Paul Krikorian, uh, Paul Krikorian has helped lead on the reform issue. Current Price has been the single worst person on this council. Single worst on these issues. I, I cannot overstate that. Uh, Council Member Krikorian is organized, effective, and communicates with those inside and outside of City Hall. Current Price is not. Current Price was a completely zoned out, potted plant on this council until Dulce ran against him. He made Clarence Thomas look talk talkative. For item 24, um, I just want to say, if Nuri Martinez would have listened to me, she would still be on this council and probably be council president. Back in, in late 2019, she wanted to meet with me. In January 2020, the first thing I, the, the one thing I pushed was, please, we got to have a better redistricting process. Her immediate reaction was, oh my God, it's so much drama. And I was like, great. <laughs> I thought I had an in. I said, here's the way you can remove the drama. Take it off your plate. Create an independent commission. We got time to put something on the ballot for this November. Even if you don't want to do that, we can change things within our charter's boundaries to improve the process. What did she do? Ghosted, hibernated, did nothing until she was forced to do one little measly thing with ex parte disclosure. She put herself in this position because she wanted to hold on to that power because she had not fully appreciated what redistricting brought to the table at that point in that conversation. So when we talk about general. expansion, independent redistricting, I hope you move quickly. With expansion, keep in mind that LA County had an independent commission. They still had a tough time with five districts on their own. Uh, redistricting three times in four years is worthless and it's gonna be messy. I do not support rushing something so deeply connected to representative government with less than a couple months analysis and community buy-in to the ballot. Uh, we got a, a lot of born again reformers on this, on this council now. Nuri is no longer in the standing in the way. It's on you. And I, I don't like the approach I've had to have over the last two years, but it's been necessary because of who's been in council president. She has been nothing like Herb Wesson on these issues. I warned Nuri. We either work together to find compromise or we relentlessly shame you into doing better. Let's get back to more of the former. I yield my time, fuck you. Thank you. And just for the record, Mr. Price is not at the meeting now. So we can go into the next speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 6696, please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Jane Velez Mitchell. I would like to speak on item 27, the plant-based treaty, as well as public comment. So I, May I proceed? So you said 27, sorry, I, I had trouble hearing you. 27 and public comment, what was the other thing? That's it, 27 and oh. public comment. Okay, great, so we'll give you a minute for item 27, followed by a minute for general public comment. Um, and I'll briefly tell you when that occurs, when we switch. So please go ahead. Thank you so much. Yes, hi everyone. I'm Jane Velez Mitchell, journalist and founder of the Unchained TV streaming television network. We endorsed the plant-based treaty, along with 58,000 people from around the world, 19 cities, five Nobel laureates, IPCC scientists, and more than 1,800 organizations, community groups, and businesses. And we ask you, the LA council members, to make history again to help reverse the climate crisis by voting yes on this resolution. The plant-based treaty offers a viable solution that is better for us and for the planet and involves virtually no sacrifice with extraordinary rewards. LA can lead the nation and the world in combating climate change by endorsing this treaty that will inspire a cultural shift to a healthier, more sustainable diet that is better for children, for adults, for people of all backgrounds and for the planet. You can go to general. And I have to say, in a time when LA is really hurting from some ugly, hateful, truly despicable and shameful language, this plant-based treaty is an opportunity to bring Angelinos together for something that is proactively stressing peace, sustainability, and kindness to all. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker.
speaker with the last four digits, 5079. <clears throat> Please omit yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Morning, I'd like to speak in general public. Very good, you have a minute. Please go ahead, speaker. Good morning, my name is Sam Williams, LADWP employee 794671. I have emailed every one of you council members over the past year about the systematic racism against black male employees inside of LADWP for over a year. Now that the truth about what you all do behind closed doors is coming to light. I was called a monkey by employee John Bud Recky, Hitler by Bernard Rogers, and it was never investigated by LADWP and told that Los Angeles Department of White People by Andrew Kendall is what LADWP stands for. LADWP never investigated these complaints and illegal terminated me because of exposure. In 2022, when does the racism against black people end? This is not a diverse city council, nor does it reflect the citizens. In the racism against black male employees inside LADWP, open an investigation into the hiring practices of LADWP, which are still racist today. I am Sam Williams, employee number 794671, a member in the Watts community for over 45 years. Come talk to me. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, with the last four digits, 3784, please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. All right, this is Andrew Gravener. I'd like one complete, uninterrupted minute of general public comment. Go ahead. Or is yours? Oh, oh. All right, so I'm out here in front of City Hall right now. As you can probably hear on this, if you hadn't heard already, Mitch, there are a lot of people out here who want you to cancel this meeting. Cancel the meeting. Without the resignations, there can be no genuine meeting. We need Gil Cedillo and Kevin DeLeon to resign now. That is now. Their comments are racist, unacceptable, and they need to resign from this council. This council cannot move forward until we have those resignations. And we need every council member to leave this meeting, break the quorum. Mike Bonin, Nithya Raman, Marquis Harris Dawson, all of you, leave this meeting so that we have no quorum, you have no quorum, and this meeting will be canceled. We can uh, move forward with it. The people's business is the resignations of Gil Cedillo and Kevin DeLeon. Until then, nothing else is the people. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, with the last four digits, 4006, please unmute yourself and identify the items you would like to speak on. Hello, this is Renee Rowland from PAWPAC. I'm speaking to item 27. Oh, it may run slightly over a minute if I could use some general comment period as well. You may indeed. So you have a minute for each. Please go ahead. Thank you. PAWPAC is a statewide committee founded in 1980 for the protection of animals and the environment. We thank you for providing public comment on this everyday business during this challenging time. We endorse the plant-based treaty and we urge the council to do the same as Jane Velez Mitchell pointed out, so many around the world are already endorsing it, including 19 global cities. Mayor Garcetti, as past president of C40 Mayors, challenged the world last year when he said that this decade must be one of exponential action. Nothing short of exponential action is what this existential crisis demands. We can no longer look the other way from the devastation that animal agriculture brings. When 91% of the destruction of the Amazon was caused by animal ag, and more than half of California's GHGs have come from livestock and dairy. Earth? Please, you have a minute of general, if you wish. Oh, I think you dropped off. So, yes, okay, so we'll go on to the next person. Speaker with the last four digits, 5746. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Alex Horner. I'd like to speak on 4243 and public comment, please. Great, so you have two minutes for the items, followed by a minute for general public comment. Please begin. 
Um, I echo the people who are asking you not to vote on president of city council today. You should not move forward with important business until the issue with the Leon and Cedillo is resolved. I'm a resident of District 10 and my family stands with the community in demanding the resignations of Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo. I'm confident you all heard the people of this city chanting in unison, no resignation, no meeting last week. Proceeding with today's meeting makes you complicit with the actions of your colleagues and it is unacceptable. Is what they did not awful enough for you? Not just what they said, but what they were doing in that meeting in the first place. How abhorrent would something need to be for you to stand with us? I'm a mother of two small children working full time that Kevin DeLeon sees the people standing up together, showing up repeatedly at City Hall, camps out on his block, and still refuses to step down, only illustrates how deep his flawed thinking goes. We don't have time for this. Folks don't want to be camping out just to get what's so obviously right here. You should all stand with us and deny quorum until Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo resign. No resignation, no meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 0746. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, can you hear me? Loud yes. and clear. Okay, thanks. Um, this is Ernest Cornish, and I want to speak on item 43. Um, I guess it's 42 and 43. Sure. And sure. general comment. Then you have two minutes for the items, followed by a minute for general. Please begin, Speaker. Thank you. Um, one, um, I'm with all the public when it comes to making sure that we don't move forward in this city until Kevin Dillion and Gil, Gil is removed. Um, they have done nothing, um, especially Kevin Dillion has done nothing in his district. And these items um, definitely do not need to be voted on until they are completely removed. Um, I also want to bring up the fact that district Four. I have been fighting since July for an EV charger to be fixed. Please, I'm begging the council to add more people to BSS. Clinton needs help. He's one person for 500 EV chargers, and he definitely needs help. Um, that charger has been out of commission since July, and we need to have it replaced or fixed um, like yesterday. And we cannot move the city forward as far as an electric vehicle city until that happens. Um, please support um, the people that are in charge of these things so that they can do their job and get more help for them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 0188. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Hello, my name is Whistleblower, and I'd like to give one general public comment, please. Sure, you have a minute. Please begin. My public comments about extension of your state of emergency. On July the 27th, 2021, the mayor and former President Council Martinez stated that throughout this pandemic, the city of Los Angeles would continue to monitor data and track the science associated with COVID-19. On September the 2nd of this year, the CDC moved LA County into the low community level for severe illness from COVID, reflecting minimal stress on hospital systems in LA County. On October the 13th of this year, the CDC stated case rate per 100,000 was 73. New COVID-19 admissions Per uh, 100,000 population was five. Percentage of staff inpatient beds by use of patients with confirmed COVID-19 was 2.8%. I need you to hear and understand this. When you purposely mislead people, there's no difference than if you were to tell them an outright lie. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Speaker with the last four digits, 1075, please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like yeah. to speak on. Hello, my name is, is my name is Estella Suarez Hamilton. I would like to speak on all available items and general public comment, please. Sure, so you have three minutes for items one through 11 and 24 through 43, followed by a minute in general. Uh, in general, you can speak about any of the other items too, if you wish, so please go ahead. We'll set the clock for three minutes. Thank you very much. Starting with item 24, which I'm gonna call the redlining item. So I disagree, I'm opposed to an independent commission because think about this, people. If the commission is independent, then you can all hold them accountable like how we're holding them accountable now. If some commissioner who's independent, not a public servant, not an elected person, if they go ahead and say something racist, how are you gonna hold them accountable? How are we gonna hold them accountable this way? Now, I have talked about how there are traditional pressures of meeting in person and I said this last year, they are afraid of just eye contact. They are afraid of just seeing the people in the room and hearing what you have to say. They'll walk out of the room. The traditional pressures are, that's why it's in our constitution. Freedom of expression, redress of grievances, petitioning the government and also gathering peacefully. That's a part of that, right? What are they doing? They're using COVID-19 as an excuse to keep people out. Now for item 31, 4118. Now I have called the council eugenicists. I have called them eugenicists in the past, racists in the past, and they use their you know position to say, oh no, that's not possible. We're not racist, that's not possible. We're not eugenicists. 4118 is direct eugenic policy. Historically, we're gonna look back, the history books, which I will help write, if I have to, will say that the eugenicists of council use 4118 item 31, use COVID-19 to keep people out so they couldn't talk about this item. So the homeless people couldn't look at you in the eyes while you strip them of their 14th amendment right, constitution protected right. Now for item 41 and 40, or yeah, 41, the population growth council fees. Again, we need people to be in the room to be able to talk about this item, to look at you in the eye. For item 42 and 43, these are items that are hot button. You have stacked this agenda so that the, the people, there's a thousand people watching just the YouTube. I don't know how many people are on the call. So the people cannot enter city hall to talk about this issue, about their representation. That's ridiculous. Now for my, for item, yeah, for my general public okay. comment, okay, one minute, thank you, one minute of my general public comment. The necessity, Mitch O'Farrell, for the Zoom. What is the necessity for the Zoom? What are the ethics and rationality? Where is your evidence for the necessity of a Zoom meeting? You saw how many people were wanting to come in the city hall, and those are just the people that could do the testing between 74 hours or the vaccination checkpoint. Those are just the people that you could barely let in with your, you have a occupancy, right? That, those are just the people that could get in this exclusive meeting, which you have segregated the entrances. It is time to end the pseudoscientific vaccine checkpoints at the entrance to city hall. They are de facto segregation and they are illegal. They violate the Brown Act, absolutely. There should be no conditions for attendance. I don't have to give you even my name if I don't want to. You guys are breaking the law. And I'm, I called you out as eugenicists. I called you out as racist. And it came true. All of you. Step down. Thank all you. of you. Thank Let's you very have much. A Thank you. Next. Speaker with the last four digits, 8916. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 8916. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Well, hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd like to speak on general public comment, please. Sure, you have a minute. Please begin. Yeah, thank you. My name is Michael Fujimori. I'm with a group called Los Angeles for Animals. As everyone knows, climate change is the number one environmental danger that we are facing that is affecting our very survival of this planet that we are living on. 
And the number one cause of climate change is the greenhouse gas emissions caused by animal agriculture. That is why today I am urging the council to endorse and vote, vote yes on the plant-based treaty resolution and set an example for the rest of the world as Los Angeles has always been at the forefront of positive change and forward thinking. As I said before, the very survival of our planet is at stake here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker at the last four digits, 2042. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi there. <clears throat> Could I speak on item 43, 41, and general public comment, please? Sure. So you have two minutes for the items, followed by admit for general. Please begin. Thank you. First of all, I want to say, Ms. Hutt, please learn the Pledge of Allegiance, and I hope all council members can learn the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone has been hot to trot on the racist remarks from our city council members, and rightfully so. However, are we all forgetting about the major corruption with other city council members like Soft on Crime, Monica Rodriguez, who led the defund the LAPD movement, who, to my knowledge, is being investigated for obstruction of justice and much more by the FBI? I sure hope this council does not elect the failed public safety committee chairwoman to the city council presidency. You don't throw rocks in a glass house and Monica is a complete hypocrite. It was appalling to see her on the news regarding Nuri's comments because we have evidence that Monica Rodriguez has been a part of hateful comments herself. Another quick thing I want to touch on are these illegal mandates. Um, please get rid of them. Any council member that votes for them are guilty of crimes against humanity. Also, for item 41, please work on changing the charter so that Angelinos can vote to elect our chief of police. Also, expanding city council should be seriously considered, given that 15 council members control one of the largest economies and we have the deepest ports in the world, so we need more council members. Also, it is Italian American Heritage Month. I didn't hear one word from the city, so I'd just like to make note of that. There are a lot of people in this city with Italian roots, and I think it should be uh, um, recognized. Other than that, I yield the rest of my comments. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 9346, please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi there, my name is Timothy with LA Animal Save, and I'd like to make a public comment on item number 27. Okay, so so you've got a minute for item 27. If you want a general public comment, I wasn't sure that'll be an additional minute. So we'll set the, the clock for a minute, and if you need more time, you can run into the second minute. So please go ahead. Excellent, thank you. Hi, I'm asking LA City Council to vote yes on the plant-based treaty resolution. The plant-based treaty is a groundbreaking international agreement that's a companion piece to the Paris Climate Accords and will center food systems in the fight against global climate change. It has three aims. One, to stop the wide-scale destruction of critical ecosystems by animal agriculture. Two, to promote a shift away from animal agriculture to more healthy, more environmentally sustainable plant-based diet. And three, to actively restore the damage that's been done to the environment by reforesting and rewilding to heal our ecosystems and biodiversity. Again, I'm urging the city council to please vote yes on the plant-based treaty. This will help California to step up and make history as a leader in the fight against climate change nationwide and worldwide. Thank you. Thank you very much. Speaker with the last four digits, 0322. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Good morning, this is MJ King, District 14 resident, speaking on items 12, 14, 34, 41, and general public comment, please. 
I think you said 12 and 14, which were voted on, but you can talk about it in general public comment. Were the, the other items that you asked about? No, 12. No, I'm District 14 resident. That's where the 14 came from. Okay, just 14? Item, okay. item 12, 24, 34, 41, and general public comment. I ah, got it. My mistake. So you have three minutes for the items followed by a minute for general. Sorry about that. So please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. On item 12, don't allow LAPD to steal civilian monies. Chief Moore acknowledged at the last police, police commission meeting that LAPD has killed more people this year than last year and much more than the four-year average. Stop funding the most murderous police department in this country. No further expansion of 4118 should be voted on until ordinances that Martinez, De Leon, and Cedillo participate in are reviewed. That includes LAPD budget, redistricting, and all motions this council has passed that are steeped in anti-blackness. 4118 must end. It is only fueling our homelessness crisis, and y'all are complicit in the deaths of our unhoused neighbors for allowing 4118 to continue. There should be no voting for council president until De Leon and Cedillo resign. Mitch O'Farrell's interim presidency is Ill illegitimate because his own staff participated in these conversations, including discussing paying off Democratic clubs. This entire meeting is illegitimate. You held Wednesday's meeting in person, knowing that Biden had COVID. So why is this meeting virtual? Because you don't like the national media attention you're receiving? Every person on this council who continues to participate in meetings is complicit with the anti-Blackness, anti-Indigenous, anti-Semitic, anti-AAPI, homophobic threats of violence, and racist sentiments expressed by Martinez, De Leon, and Cedillo. Lastly, it's arrogant that you allow De Leon to skip this meeting, yet you allow him to disguise his voice and make the first public comment. No resignations, no meetings. You are all complicit. Um, are you done, Speaker? I guess so. So we'll go on to the next speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 2203, please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Um, public comment? Sure, you have a minute, please begin. Thank you. I would like to start off by apologizing for what Nori Martinez did and the other two council members. It's really sad what they did, but I also want to say that Monica Rodriguez is a big hypocrite. She's holding Nori accountable and these other two council members but what about her and her number one volunteer was saying racist remarks on social media about the person she was running against for re-election. And she also tipped him when the police department were going to raid his illegal pot shop. Why did she do that? Because he was her wonder, number one donor? That is not okay. And I hope that you guys don't vote for her to become president because she only works with organizations that do her dirty work. And she is not a good representative. She's okay to, again, say it's not okay what they did, but why did she hold her volunteer accountable and say either you apologize to her or nothing? You cannot volunteer for me anymore. No, she didn't do that. Why? Because she was okay with what he was saying about her. And that is not okay. And she should Thank be you. held accountable. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 9711. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. I want to speak on 40, uh, 42, 43 and public comment. Very good. So you have two minutes for the items, followed by a minute for general. Please begin. All right. So this is Jason Reedy with the People City Council uh, on item 42 and 43. Rodriguez moved to postpone this vote until you had all of your constituents in the room, but no one seconded it. Why? How can you vote for a new president, president hiding behind these screens, right? And we're hearing that Krikorian is going to be the one. Emperor Palpatine, KKK's Frankenstein, he doesn't deserve to be president. At a meeting in June, as I was leaving city council chambers, you said, Krikorian, and I quote, when does he start getting arrested instead of explaining things to him? When do we place him under arrest? How is someone who shares this sentiment fit to be president? As chair of the Budget and Finance Committee, he has been the architect of finding money for over $900 million increase in the LAPD's budget over the last 10 years. And need I remind you, this is also Killer Cop, Killer Cop Will Jones Jr.'s buddy. 
And then you got Karrion Price, the guy who set aside and let LAPD bomb his neighborhood with no repercussions. In addition, Mitch, you should be paying close attention to these comments. You fucker, you're just sitting there in city council chambers. You should be paying attention. The fact that you're not paying attention is a problem. Everyone else is looking into the camera and seems to be paying attention, but not you. I'm moving on to my public comment. Mitch, you said you'll hear all public comments today, but that doesn't matter when you don't listen. Mitch talks about the people's business. The people's business is no resignations, no meetings. The people's business is what you hear outside City Hall right now. The people's business is what you see in front of KDL's house right now. The people's business is what you experienced this morning outside of your house, Mitch. Every single city council member taking part in today's meeting has co-signed what KDL and CDO said. Marquise Harrisoffman, you said you're with the Blacks. So why are you in attendance today? Break the quorum. And then Joe Buscaino decided to show up today, the only member of city council not to call for the resignations of Nuri, KDL, and Cedillo. You know why? Because he said worse. He believes in what they said. He is the most anti-black member of the city council. He said he draws a firm line about conversations on family, but threatened to call DCFS on my family just two months ago in city council chambers. He threatened to take a black child away from his black father. Fuck every single one of y'all and best believe we will make house visits to every single one of y'all for participating in this meeting. You can go to general. It is ridiculous. You have a, a minute to continue in general, if you wish. Are you there? Okay, I think you're hung up. All right, so next person. Speaker with the last four digits, 4205. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. All right, greetings. Um, I want to speak on um, item 42 and 43 in general public comment. Sure, so two minutes for the items, one minute for general. Please begin. Awesome. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Professor Christian Green. I'm with the Black Los Angeles Young Democrats. Um, also, uh, advocate clergy, professor of sociology and African American studies. Uh, what we have seen over the last week and a half has been a total disgrace and totally disheartening to the angels of this great city, Los Angeles, the county of Los Angeles, and the state of California. For the world to see and hear anti-black, bigoted, fascist rhetoric spewed, a young black orphan was ridiculed and equated to a monkey is unacceptable in 2022. It is unacceptable. Come on, say it with me. It is unacceptable. Then the nerve for these two city council members to still have their seat is mind-boggling to me, and we deserve more than an apology. This is what the people would like to see is more than an apology. And so I'm here to speak and make these requests uh, for items 42 and 43. I definitely would like to look into the president that has a long history of building black and brown solidarity, always putting people first, can build multiracial coalitions, will consider the needs of the most vulnerable. And to that person, I think Marquise Harris Dawson would be a great president to this council. Um, I would also like for us to think about how to really call for resignations in 2022. We want to call for the city attorney investigation regarding KDL and Gill policies over the last two years. So the city attorney should get to work and start looking into that, but also make some type of amendment or to call for the resignation. We keep talking about this word healing and healing and healing, but we cannot heal without facing the truth. What these elected, uh, elected officials did was revolting, repellent, repulsive, sickening, uninviting, and unsavory, and straight up whack at the end of the day. And our elected officials should be held to higher standards. So essentially what we want today is to resign now, KDL and Cedillo, be on the right side of history and admit your fault so that we all can heal. Uh, Latinx leader Cesar Chavez said, stated uh, that the preservation of one's own culture does not require contempt or disrespect for others' cultures. So stand with the black Democrats, stand with the and black and for general. Perfect. And I'll finish off with this. Uh, I am with the black. Thank you so much. And you have a good day. Thank you. Speaker with the last four, four digits, 5858. Five, eight. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Craig. Thank you for allowing me this time. I reside in District 13. This is a comment for the resignation of Tillion and Cedillo. So my I, public comment is this, con so this I, kind of conduct behavior. Hello? Go ahead. Okay. 
This kind of conduct behavior can't be tolerated. It completely undermines what we stand for, a city that strength is built on diversity and inclusion for and by all Angelinos. Your true colors shown through in your immoral, unethical, racist, bigotry, and cynical behavior conduct with absolute disregard for the entire Los Angeles community and your colleagues, also including your constituents. We the people as a city of tax paying residents are demanding council members De Leon and Cedillo to immediately step down for once and for all. You're occupying valuable space and time that could be otherwise be occupied by a more worthy council candidate who would keep our city moving forward on the moral and ethical code this city was founded on. All while you continue to also delay city business with your egos and antics, wasting all of our valuable time. And thank you to all council members for your service. It's a tough job. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 5404. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, yeah, hi. My name is Jean York. I'm representing the Reseda Neighborhood Council. We have one CIS that we passed on items 24 and 41 last night, another CIS that we passed on items 42 and 43 last night, and then I also have in my personal capacity a general public comment. hear me so we're, we're going Hello? to set, we're going to set the clock for three minutes and then one minute so please begin i have two cis's i, I know but, but we we can't give you i mean you listed off like 15 minutes worth of stuff and there are a lot of people who want to speak so this is a prerogative right. of the president so we're going to set the clock for yeah. three minutes and then one minute then i'm going to do the cis on 42 and 43 i'd ask that the council look at the one that we did on 24 and 41. Right, so they're online. All right, so this is the Reseda Neighborhood Council supports the appointment of a new council president. It is clear that the council needs new uncompromised leadership in the interim before the next council is seated in December. However, the Reseda Neighborhood Council does have concerns over those who have been seen proffering themselves for the position of council president. We wish to speak to those concerns given the great need for leadership in this urgent moment. The Reseda Neighborhood Council opposes the appointment of current price for interim president. Mr. Price has frequently voted in decisions where he should have recused himself due to significant economic interests regarding his wife's employment. As reported in the LA Times, Price voted on decisions involving at least 10 companies in the same year as they were listed as providing at least $10,000 of income to Dell Richardson and Associates, according to his annual financial disclosures and council records reviewed by the Times. Despite the reporting by the Times, Mr. Price has continued a pattern of failing to follow proper recusal procedure for items where he has a conflict. In addition, as the role of council president is to create the agenda, we worry about the ability of Mr. Price to perform this essential function. At this moment, we feel it is imperative to elect an interim president who follows ethics rules meticulously. Uh, while we agree with the sentiment that Mike Bonin is certainly a poetically just choice for council president, it has been expressed that Mr. Bonin is not interested in the position due to the significant effect of these damning revelations have had on his family. Therefore, we turn to other possible choices. During redistricting, only two council districts, two and four, face significant unwanted changes to their electorate and shared a similar uncertainty regarding their ultimate disposition until the final days of map drawing. This leads us to believe that the two council members representing those districts were likely not involved in the clear manipulation of the redistricting process. We therefore would feel comfortable with the nomination of Paul Krikorian or Nithya Raman for council presidency. However, given the seniority and experience of council member Krikorian, the fact that he's in his last term of office, the advocacy of his redistricting commissioner, Dennis Tanya, on behalf of the 4-2 district, and that he is spoken of very highly by fellow neighborhood council members in District 2, we believe Paul Kaforian would be most likely served well and honorably as interim council president during this difficult period in Los Angeles' history. Mr. Kaforian has also called attention before the new scandal at City Hall to the urgent need for charter reform. We recommend the appointment of Paul Kaforian as council president for this interim period. And to be very clear, we're only talking about the interim period. It shouldn't be interpreted as anything more than that. Thank you. Um, should I move on to my personal public comment? Sure. So, Great. Is it um, so in my personal capacity, um, I, I agree. This meeting shouldn't even be happening. Um, not until Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo resign. That's what's owed the city. I, I really wish that members would break quorum now. 
there shouldn't be any city business going until those two are gone. But then I also want to talk about item 41 because our neighborhood council was one of the first ones to support independent redistricting and we also called for council expansion. That got sat on for a year, a year. I called in on September 21st to the rules meeting. We asked about council expansion being added to that meeting. No one moved, no one acted, no one listened to the public comment. It should not take scandal for this city to do the things that benefit this city. It shouldn't take that. We need to be proactive. Y'all need to listen more. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous in a city this size. We are the most underrepresented city in the entire nation. We're not a leader. We're in the last you. place. Thank, thank you, Speaker. It. Speaker with the last four digits, 1881. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 1881. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker, if you're there, please unmute right now. We'll have to move on to someone else. For the public, hold on one minute. We're, we're dealing, dealing with some technical difficulties on the council floor. Just uh, uh, let's just take a pause for a minute while it's being addressed. Thank you for your patience. Yeah, so we're, for the public, just please hold on. We're solving the problem right now. Thank you. Uh, it looks like we have Zoom back. Let us know, ITA, when we are ready to continue. And we are ready to continue with the next caller. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 0201. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Yes, thank you. I just have a general public comment. Of course, so you have a minute. Um, I would, I'm sorry? Uh, you have a minute, please begin. Are you thank first? you. Um, I just wanted to extend my condolences to the, to the two uh, openly gay members of the city council. Uh, Mike Bonin, who suffered the brunt of the worst personal attacks in the recent scandal. Uh, but I also want to point out that Mitchell Farrell, as an openly gay individual and someone of indigenous descent, also suffered um, serious insults in the recent incident. And I just want to give a shout out to Mitchell Farrell, who has stepped up and shown true leadership during this crisis. And um, I just appreciate the fact that you were a true leader in a leadership vacuum. And um, thank you again. And that's my comment. Thank you, Speaker. We appreciate it. Speaker with the last four digits, 1050. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker, please identify the items you'd like to speak on. Can you hear me? We can. Which items would you like to speak on? General 
of public comment, please. Very good. You have a minute. Please begin. Good morning. My name is Teresa Hillary. I'm a 16-year resident of CD14. I've attended three neighborhood council special meetings, downtown Los Angeles Neighborhood Council, Historic Highland Park Neighborhood Council, and Eagle Rock Neighborhood Council. Each voted to send a letter condemning the council members' actions and calling for Mr. DeLeon's resignation. Contrary to the um, comments of the first caller, I believe the actions taken by the neighborhood councils represent the general sentiments of the stakeholders in CD14 that Mr. DeLeon should resign. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 2130. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi there, I'm speaking on item 27. I'm Lisa Levinson, Campaigns Director for In Defense of Animals, an international animal protection nonprofit with 250,000 supporters. And several thousand of them are in our Los Angeles residents. I also live in Los Angeles. Our organization has endorsed the plant-based treaty and encourages the council to adopt this historic resolution that will save the lives of millions of farmed animals, foster plant-based lifestyles, and help mitigate the climate crisis. Los Angeles can be the first major U.S. city to adopt the resolution. Last year, over 8,000 indefensive animal supporters urge their local officials to endorse the plant-based treaty, and we hope the Los Angeles City Council listen to their pleas. We'd like to thank the council members who introduced this resolution and the entire council for your thoughtful consideration. By adopting the plant-based treaty, Los Angeles can help heal our community and our planet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 5380. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, I would like to speak on 24, 28, 41, 42, 43, and general public comment. But right. I would also like to point out before I start that per ethics training, being absent does not meet the standard for recusal. So, so, so your so comment thank, earlier so, that Price was so, absent so, so is not So thank you. We're going to set the clock for three minutes. You can talk about that in general. So we'll set the clock for three minutes and um, then one minute for general. So please go ahead. Okay. Neighborhood councils have been asking for independent redistricting, council expansion, ethics reform, MLO changes, et cetera, for a long time basic charter reform issues. It shouldn't take City Hall exploding into a dumpster fire of scandal to make these changes happen. But it feels like prior to that, we've been blocked at every turn, especially by Nuri having been in charge of the Rules Committee. I'm sure that Council Member Rahman can relate as 211472 is one of the motions that was stalled out. And um, like, <laughs> Beyond what is being done, something needs to be looked at in regards to the president being in charge of the rules committee and being able to stall things out like that. This corruption has exposed that as an issue. I'm not going to go into what racist gerrymandering trash the redistricting process has. We are all aware of it. Really, thank God for the leak because it's so vindicating to finally have proof of what is going on beyond, behind closed doors. LA has the most underrepresented local government of any major US city, and I'm pretty sure it ranks um, towards the top in the world. I guess we're number one at something, go us. Anyway, this is possibly a once in a lifetime opportunity for Angelinos. Hopes and prayers that you don't all fuck it up for us. As for the animal services transfer, it's great that Caress wants to pay for dog walkers um, to cover his ass on the glue contract, but that's not what his neighborhood services funds are for. Another one of his flurry of 11 motions from the other week was to take $3 million from the reserve fund for animal services. The reserve fund is for emergencies. Caret's being shitty at overseeing animal services contracts in his capacity as head of the pause committee isn't a financial emergency. We need a new council president because poor Mitch is going to have a stress-induced incident trying to oversee council, but something as important as this vote shouldn't be tainted by Cedillo and DeLeon 
still being on the council and it shouldn't be held virtually. It needs to be held in person at City Hall and those two need to resign before it happens. And, you know, I've seen the articles in the Times painting this as an issue with the protesters. It's not an issue with the protesters. It's an issue with the corruption of City Hall and those two assholes not stepping down. They do not represent the city of LA and they need to step down. Although I am glad that you guys let uh, Seven De Leon's mom speak first and tell us what a great job he's doing for his council district. Um, you know, the FBI needs to come in and investigate what is going on with redistricting and also there needs to be a public corruption investigation also into the appointment of Heather Hutt to CD10. I'm sure Staffer B has a contact there that he can reach out to, or maybe uh, you know some of you are bugged and you can just say something out loud and they'll catch it. Don't um, be general. You know, in terms of Mitch, in terms of Mitch not being Nuri's boy, let's look at who seconded her motion to ram through Heather Hutt 220981. Fadio, DeLeon, Corretz, and O'Farrell. Mitch, you might be Nuri's boy just a little bit. Correct. I'm willing to believe you're just flailing for anything that you think will get you votes because you're doing so bad in the controller race. This whole situation is disgraceful. I just, I'm, I'm out of words because I'm so disgusted. And I thank those of you that have stepped up because there are some of you that I do believe are not corrupt. So for those of you that are doing a good job and trying to stand up against all of this corruption and fight against it. Thank you. But for the rest of you, you should be ashamed. Yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 0985. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, this is Peggy Lee Kennedy of Venice. I'd like to speak on 31. 34, 42, 43, and general public comment. So you've got three minutes for the items, followed by a minute for general public comment. Please begin. 31. Uh, City Council Person Hutt. Uh, this is a racist law. This removes people who live outside, unhoused people, primarily people of color, with the police. LAPD, it's, it's quite cruel, and sanitation. It's not nice. It's really evil, and these people are people of color. It harms people of color. It's a racist law. LAMC 4118 is a racist law. Now, you can put out a statement saying you don't like racist words, but this is a racist law. If you're voting in favor of this racist law, that's racist too. So, and it's not just people of color, it's disabled people, very disabled people. When are we gonna do no harm first and actually go out and look at these people and do needs assessments and provide the care that we really need to do? That includes 34, Muska, you know what? You're going to make your whole area a no homeless zone? How racist of you. And 42 and 43, this, this whole city council needs to come to a halt right now. And people need to walk out. Our council members need to walk out. This, there should not be a quorum. This should stop. There should be an investigation. And not just of the city council people that were caught saying all that nasty stuff. It's all of you who voted in favor of the nasty stuff. So, and it doesn't, uh, and not just the city council, the CAO, the UHRC, the mayor's office, you're all doing the dirty work that harms people. We need to stop it. And it's not just about representation. You know, it's about corruption. It's about cruelty. It has to stop. And I am so grateful, for one, that these racist recording came out. And I hope more people start 
revealing all of the stuff you all have done. And that includes you, O'Farrell, with the Echo Park Lake. And nobody here is exempt. Anybody that's been sitting there on the sidelines while the uh, people are just swept with the LAPD and sanitation and all of this stuff that's going on on our streets, not to mention this towing of vehicles of people who that's their only homes possible. How about helping them become legal? Because the fact is, is there's no 24 hour safe parking and very little RV par- safe parking. So you have a minute I mean, for we general have to speaker. turn it around. Speaker, do you want your minute? Pardon of- me? Yes, if you wish your, to give your minute of general public comment, you may do so. Uh, no, I guess I'm done. You guys probably aren't listening to me anyways. And really, walk out. Walk out now until the two hot city council members resign. You need to walk out. Get out of this meeting. And I yield my time. F you. Okay, thank you. They're, they're not in the meeting, by the way. Next speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 6729. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 6729. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, speaker, if you're there, please unmute right now. We'll have to move on to the next person. Okay, I think we we need to move on. Speaker at the last four digits, 9204. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Um, hi, my name is Adam Smith, and I'd like to speak on 3134, general public. Great, so you have two minutes for the items, followed by a minute for general. Please begin. Um, great. I might talk 31, 34 out of order because I forget which is which. I know one is 4118 zones for Buscaino and one for Council Member Hutt. And, um, you know, I mean, Peggy Lee Kennedy, who just spoke, brought up a little bit, but we know that uh, in LAPD's own data, that one third of the uses of force against um, Angelinos are against an unhoused population that makes up 1% of the whole entire population. And that 1% is 42% black um, in a city that's 8% black. And I know that those stats aren't anything new for the people on this call, um, but they bear repeating when, I mean, of course we know that Joe Buscaino is anti-black um, and has no problems sweeping and you know, disenfranchising and banishing and criminalizing and killing um, black unhoused people and unhoused people more generally. But I do think, um, you know, this week particularly just wanted to lift that up for Council Member Hutt, who, you know, is newly installed or a pawn or whatever um, the LA Times wants to call you. But um, it's just interesting that this week of all your you know, full on co-signing, not only meeting, not only continuing meeting as usual, but um, 4118. So, you know, I mean, we can call it what it, what, you know, council members can call it whatever, it, whatever they want to call it, but it does perpetuate um, systemic anti-blackness that is rooted in um, violence. And that's, you know, rooted in, you know, death making, harm, all that shit. So um, I'll move on to general public comment, I guess. Okay. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I seem to remember um, Council Member O'Farrell talk about, you know, after Nuri Martinez resigned, that Council will be able to continue business after the other two resign, after KDL and CDO resign, and yet, um, you know, I, it's interesting that last Wednesday, 
you barely had a quorum and Buscaino and Lee weren't there. And I wonder, you know, what facilitation went beyond behind closed doors to make sure that quorum was only 10 and that you were missing um, those two. It's interesting. It's not interesting that they're all back today. But um, I guess I'm just, you know, standing out with folks out front of City Hall earlier, uh, entirely disappointed that the meeting happened today. Of course, you know, Mitchell Farrell is going to do whatever he can to save face and make himself look like the great facilitator of healing. Thank you. Quote. Thanks. Thanks for calling in. Speaker with the last four digits, 5402. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, yes, I'd like to speak on public comment. Okay, so you have a minute. Please begin. Thank you. I was, I, I'm a resident of CD14. I'm just calling to urge for the resignation of Kevin DeLeon uh, since he assumed his role as our council member. We effectively haven't had uh, representation in city council. We uh, were neglected in terms of city services, so I think this is an excellent opportunity for him to step down. Uh, and that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, one, four, six, nine. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, one, four, six, nine. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Um, yes, hello. Uh, public comment, please. Sure, you have a minute. Please begin. This is Michelle Dumont. I'd like to reiterate a lot of the things that people have been saying, and I'm particularly angry with Mitch O'Farrell um, because he has lied to us. He told us that there would not be city business done while until um, Elion and Cedillo resigned. They have not resigned, and he used this COVID excuse to have the meeting virtual well you know you're in that you're really saying oh well we would have had a public meeting well we don't want you to have a public meeting and i think all of you are next on the list of us requiring you to resign if you don't get up and get out of these meetings we do not want these this business to go forward as long as these two people have not resigned I stand with Black Lives Matter and with all Black Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 4379. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, greetings. I'd like to speak on 2441 and general public comment. Sure. So you have two Mike, minutes. Mike Feinstein. Sorry, what was that last thing? Yeah, uh, my name is Mike Feinstein. Okay, so two minutes followed by one minute for general. So please begin, Speaker. Great, I'm, I'm representing the Green Party of Los Angeles County. We support independent redistricting commission and a larger city council of 50 members or more. We believe those changes are necessary but not sufficient and that the proper structural response to the crisis we have at the moment is to empower a charter review commission to consider a substantially larger LA City Council from elected from multi-seat districts by proportional representation ranked choice voting. Even with an independent commission drawing district lines and even drawing lines for a larger city council, redistricting for single seat districts will remain problematic and controversial because there will always be a discretionary choice about which group of voters get grouped with which others. A different choice in single seat district lines can lead to a different result in terms of who rep receives representation and who does not, no matter who draws the lines. Electing a larger city council from multi-seat -district districts by proportional representation would mean broader, deeper, and more diverse representation, both within each district and citywide, and, ends, and an end to the corruptible single-seat system council districts LA has today. It would also mean less expensive campaigns because the threshold percentage of votes to get elected under proportional representation is much lower, better realization of the goals of the California Voting Rights Act, and an enhanced role for neighborhood councils to be able to relate to multiple council members in their council districts, depending upon the issue at hand. 
and in eliminating LA's outdated two-round contingent spring primary November general election runoff in favor of a single November ranked choice vote, all city council elections will be decided in November when turnout is higher and the electorate more diverse. And I'm ready for my general comment. Very good. Please go ahead. The general comment is, is that it's the position of the Green Party of Los Angeles County that council members Cedillo and De Leon should resign immediately. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 9957. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Public comment. Very good. You have one minute. Please begin. I just want to say that this meeting is illegitimate. The community has spoken very clearly, and what we want is very obvious. No meetings without resignations. All of you have said that you want them to resign as well, right? We saw the tweets go out. You had um, public meetings where you said you wanted to them, them to resign, but words with no action is meaningless. You all should have joined the public and canceled this meeting until Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo resign. That's number one. Next, Mitch, you need to go. You're Nuri's boy, you're racist as fuck, Echo Park. We are not going to forget or forgive you for that. Heather Hutt, you're my councilwoman, even though no one voted for you. We don't want 4118 period at all. Um, we definitely do not want you to extend it. It's cruel and ineffective. Um, that's it, stop the meetings until we have resignations. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 0653. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Public comment. And you have a minute. Please begin. My name is Louisa Padilla Maropoulos. I'm a founding member of the Echo Park Neighborhood Council, active up until 2019. In the 1990s, I filed a racial discrimination lawsuit against the city of Los Angeles for the exact same reasons that all these people have come forward and spoken on. The city of Los Angeles tore apart my case uh, by hiding it and squashing it under a workman's compensation case and never addressing the civil rights that they violated. You called me crazy. You said I was a liar, that it never happened. Well, guess what? The truth, it took decades. I am the widow seeking justice. That was the gospel this Sunday at church. The widow seeking justice has brought her friends. And excuse me for being so emotional because it has taken decades for the truth to come out. And I am so happy it has finally come out. Mitchell Farrell, the Echo Park Thank Improvement Association. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 5177. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 5177. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Which items would you like to speak on? Uh, general public. Very good. You have a minute. Please begin. Um, I just want to say I just agree with um, what's going on with Mr. Kevin De Leon. Thank you, Mr. Kevin De Leon, for all you've done for the community of El Torino. We know you are not how the media and your colleagues are trying to portray you. We support you. Hundreds of us are uh, in support of you. This seems like a political ambush to me, Hip hypocrisy at its finest. By this, I'm referring to the rest of the city council coming out on TV saying what they're saying. They need to resign, not you. You and Mr. Sadi and Mr. Gil Sadil have done a lot for the community. Um, it seems like they waited for the perfect opportunity during uh, election time to release this unfortunate audio. You know, we all have bad moments and we could all learn from this. To the city council, throw the first stone if you've never had bad moments like this or said any un un inappropriate things. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Speaker.
Speaker with the last four digits, 1617. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, my name's Sean Osborne from the Libertarian Party of Los Angeles County. I want to speak on all items and general public comment. Okay, so you have three minutes for items 1 through 11 and 24 for 40 through 43, followed by a minute for general. Please begin. Uh, you know, as far as that plant-based thing, I don't want any more uh, social engineering. Uh, we don't need the progressive agenda screwing with us anymore. Um, just in general, the, the council over the last couple of years has really shown it doesn't represent people at all. You know, you've divided us. Uh, you tried to make it so people couldn't protest in front of your house. You use COVID rules to divide everything. You make it so uh, people can't go in and speak in, in person when we know vaccines don't stop the transmission of the disease. Um, you know, as far as uh, the city council in general, we feel that it should be abolished. It does not represent us. Uh, you know, and you can you can uh, enlarge it and make it you know more of them, and it's just going to be the same thing. It's going to be corrupt. They don't. They, government will never represent us. Government is a parasite. People need to read more Rothbard, like Anatomy of the State, so they can understand what government really is. Uh, the Libertarian Party suggests that we decentralize. A good step would be going with just the neighborhood councils, so the people in their own neighborhoods can be represented by people close to their house. You know, when your neighbors vote can destroy uh, the way so, you live, government's too big. So, Speaker, well, we, we seem to have veered off the items. Do you want to go to general public comment? Well, I mean, one, one, uh, one thing about uh, the meetings here, you know, so, I mean, I, I'm saying that the, the, you, the whole council is illegitimate and should be abolished. So I, I think this meeting is irrelevant. I think everything you guys do is irrelevant. It's all meant to divide. Okay, so um, and like I said, we need to... We'll, we'll yeah, take you, you to general public general, comment. You can keep going, but okay. we're going to set you for a minute. Okay, that's fine. So decentralize, you know, get, get these people out of the way. Um, we don't stand with any, any group. We stand with the individual. And as long as the city council is in place, individuals' rights will be trampled. Please uh, visit uh, L lplac.us if you want to join us and fight against all tyranny. And um, let's see what else we can say about it. Yeah, you're just never going to – these guys aren't going to fix anything, and they're definitely not going to listen to you. So let's just make government less powerful so they can't screw with your life. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 7661. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Yes, I'd like to speak on item 27. Speaker, you're really hard to hear. Can you get closer to your microphone? Yeah, hold on a second. Um, let me switch on here. There, is that better? That's better. So which items would you okay. like to speak on? Uh, item 27. Okay, so you have a minute. Please begin. Yes, my name is John Hayes, and uh, I've been a lifelong resident of L.A. County, as my mother and her father were, I became vegan over a decade ago, and uh, and I'm advocating for the plant-based treaty. I've learned plenty of things in my age about uh, the environmental catastrophe and animal cruelty that, and health problems that uh, result from ignoring the uh, promoting plant-based diets and uh, general lifestyles. So I'd like LA to take uh, the lead in this matter and endorse the plant-based treaty. Pretty much what Jane Velez Mitchell and some other people spoke about earlier. I just don't want to be redundant. So you heard what they said. I agree with what they said. And I want to the this treaty. Uh, I, think we, I can't hear you anymore. I, I assume you're done, speaker. So thank you very much. Speaker with the last four digits, 8483. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 8483. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker, if you're there, please unmute right now. Hello? Hi, which items would you like to speak on? I'd like to speak on all items and general public comment. All right, so you have three minutes for items 
1 through 11 and 24 through 43. Please stay on topic and then followed by one minute for general public comment. So please begin. Great. I'd like to use uh, the first one to speak on item 31 uh, and offer a minute of silence for the future victims of this violent racist policy uh, being perpetuated by the city council. Are you there, speaker? I'm here. Okay. So could you move, continue, please? This is the comment. Please be quiet. Well, it, this is the time for you to speak, so um, you really need to continue if you want to. Yeah, I, I found you guys. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, I am continuing. I'm asking you to please respect help, but I'll send you the, the moment of silence for the victims of your racist Bullshit 4118 policy. So again, again, speaker, we're not, it's your turn to talk to us. So please continue. I am over. talking to you and I'm sorry that you're incapable of listening. So the silent. I'd like to move on to item 34. Please go ahead. Another minute of silence. We're not going to have a minute of silence, Speaker. It's repetitive. We need to move on. So say what you want to say. We can send you to general this public comment. Okay, so we're going to send you to general public comment. And please, please talk to us or we'll end your time. Okay. Uh, okay, thank you, Speaker. So we'll What I on. would like to say is... So, Speaker, do you have anything to say to the council members? All right. Yes, yeah, I would like them to reflect. So, okay. So and we're going to forty-one eighteen policy. All right. So, thank it's you, Speaker. We're going to move on to the next speaker. Speaker with the last four digits two seven eight zero. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. General comment. Very good. You have a minute. Please begin. Thank you. Uh, my name is Lisa Hart. I'm with the Neighborhood Council Sustainability Alliance. We have 72 member neighborhood councils across the city. Our representatives voted without opposition to call for De Leon and Cedillo to resign. And personally, I don't know what they're waiting for. I don't think we can move forward as a city until they do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 5245. Five. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. I, I speak, it, it, this is not the time for a, uh, a show. Please speak to us. Okay, speaker, we're going to go on to the next speaker if you don't talk. Okay, so let's go to the next speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 2067. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hey there, can you hear me? Yes, we can. What items would you like to speak on? Great. Uh, 42, 43, and a little general public comment, please. Very good. So you have two minutes for the items, followed by a minute for general. Please begin. My name is Dan Welby. I am the chair of the Libertarian Party of Los Angeles County. I'm speaking on my own behalf today and not for the party. I personally don't care who you decide to temporarily put at the helm of this pirate ship or who you eventually install as the new captain. The ship is cursed, so it doesn't matter who's in charge or even who the crew are. All who take positions on this pirate ship will be subjected to the corruption and debauchery that is the politics of LA City. 
The world is going through a great awakening right now, and the revelations that have come forth from our great city are only a cog in this massive paradigm shift we are living through. Government, the larger it gets, the more corrupt it gets. It won't matter if you put someone with integrity and morals in positions of power once the government has grown to an unwieldy and rogue-like status. At that point, the machine is corrupt, and if you participate in it, you either acquiesce to the corruption and debauchery, or you get chewed up and spit out. Morality and ethics cannot exist in a governmental system as far gone as this council. Debauchery and corruption will prevail. In LA City, we have 99 neighborhood councils. I think it may be wise if we as a city start to think about the concept of decentralizing governmental power. It may be worth entertaining debate and discussion over whether or not the LA City Council should continue to exist at all. I believe a lot of Angelinos really want to see some major changes here in our great city. I know I do. If this is you, I'd encourage you to consider that in order to see great change, there must actually be fundamental change, which is often going to seem quite drastic or even impossible. If we just keep electing more people to this council, that would be as impactful and as purposeful as rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. You can go on to general if you wish. Sure, thank you. That was the end anyway. So, um... Yeah, I'll just take a little bit of time, I guess, to improv here for my my general public. Um, all of this is just, you guys are in an illegitimate body. Um, all of you should really just resign and, you know, let the people live our lives here in Los Angeles. Um, they're a disgrace to, to everything and everybody here in Los Angeles. And, um, you know, you would just save your face and just leave, just quit, just stop. It's all stupid. So you can find uh, more about the Libertarian Party of Los Angeles County by visiting lplac.us and peace, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 4276. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, this is Alessandra Lozano speaking on items 24 and 41. And you have a minute for two minutes, one for each. Please go ahead. Thank you so much. Uh, I am the Voting Rights and Redistricting Manager for California Common Cause. And California Common Cause is here today to express our fervent support for items 24 and 41 related to an establishment of an IRC and to increase the number of city council seats. The unfolding scandal in Los Angeles shines a light on what a redistricting process looks like under the control of incumbents and exemplifies why the drawing of district lines should be up to community-driven independent commissions. Should the city council fail to put a fully independent redistricting commission on the ballot or create one via ordinance, Common Cause will begin organizing with our partners to put one on the 2024 ballot ourselves. We also think that for Los Angeles City, an independent redistricting commission without council seat expansion is a half measure. The number of council districts has stayed at 15 since 1924. Now LA has the largest council districts in the country. When one council member represents 260,000 constituents as they do now, the people most likely to have their needs and concerns addressed are likely those with power, money, and influence, inviting corruption and skirting accountability. Council expansion paired with an independent redistricting commission would ensure a more representative, more fair, and more trustworthy government. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 6162. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Give me one second here. Hi. Good afternoon. My name is Tim Helper. I am here speaking on item 41 and general uh, comment. Great. So you have a minute for each. Please begin. Uh, a minute for each? I'm sorry. I thought it was two minutes for 41. Sorry, I I must have misunderstood. Which are the items that you wanted to speak on? Item 41 and general public comment. Yes, so you have one minute for the item, followed by one minute for general public comment. Please begin. You guys are rough. Uh, well, item 41, expanding the city council. The council should be expanding. The pay should be unchanged from judges and chained to the consumer price index. 
the fact that you guys are the highest paid city uh, council in the country is probably a good reason why we have two council members who are currently refusing to resign. They're cashing their checks and flipping up the people of Los Angeles. More importantly, neighborhood council should be included in the process from the start. Additionally, city council terms should be returned back to two terms. Considering the city council defrauded the people of LA by claiming they were pushing for term limits, which were technically true as they presented the voters with the charter change, but what was really a lie to extend the terms of the city council members from two to three. Uh, as far as general comment, listen, guys, neighbor councils need to be treated with respect and like the elected representatives that they are. Neighbor councils treated as members of the public at city council meetings, having an elected neighbor council member trying to read a community impact statement into the record so fast that nobody could understand them is an insult to the system as a whole. These councils are treated by city ethics as if they are decision makers and have to follow rules that the city council members themselves refuse to follow. These are volunteer elected leaders being held to a higher standard than one of the highest paid city councils in the country. And it really needs to stop. You guys want to truly tell people you want to change the city? Start listening to the neighborhood councils, empowering the neighborhood councils, and stop make, just brushing them to the side when you feel like it. I do want to take 10 seconds to say thank you for listening. I know it's hard to get beat up on for hours. I appreciate those of you who have actually taken the time to listen to the comments today, even though they may not always be in your favor. Thank you so much. Thank you, and we appreciate your providing comment. Speaker with the last four digits, 3836. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name's Chris Stott, and I would like to speak on general public comment. Very good. You have one minute. Please begin. As a resident of District 14, I'm calling on Kevin DeLeon to resign. Despite what his leaked comments suggest, he represents a very diverse district. Many of my neighbors are black and or queer, and I believe his racist and homophobic comments make him unqualified to represent CD14. In addition, his actions while on the council, in particular in support of an expansion of 4118, have been harmful to my unhoused neighbors and also make him unqualified to represent this district. Gil Cedillo should also resign, and his loss to Eunice Hernandez shows what happens when you exclude groups from your constituency, such as the black community, the indigenous community, and the queer community. You end up losing to people who build solidarity between communities and who seek to represent all of their constituents. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 9299. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. What's up? This is Joanna with uh, Street Watch. I'd like to talk on 3431 and general public comment. Sure. So you have two minutes for those items, followed by a minute for general public comment. Please begin. Awesome. So first of all, yeah, like no resignations, no meaning. All of y'all who were, you know, saying really nice words last week. We see you guys. Like we've been making the ask. Don't let quorum happen. If you're letting quorum happen, you are not supporting this. You are with your colleagues who refuse to resign for their racism. Uh, you know, Mitch and Gil, you guys are two peas in a pod. They compete for who can erase their unhoused constituents, uh, more quote, humanely, right? Um, Kevin, shame on you. You know, you pick criminalization over housing every time, and then you expect your staff to pick up the pieces of people's lives that you scattered. Um, you know, and then it's just a predictable and painful hypocrisy, the cynicism where you guys use COVID as an excuse to cowardly hide from your constituents and hide from accountability. Mitch, I'm looking at you. I was a community health worker during COVID. I was working on vaccine teams. We saw directly how sweep, how 4118, how all of this bullshit absolutely affects people's health, affects our work as healthcare workers and providers. Um, <laughs> We were trying to save lives and y'all were actually like literally meddling with that. So y'all have blood on your hands, all of you who voted for 4118. And we understand that that's racist. And we've been saying that shit for a long time. For those of you who are new, 
4118 is absolutely racism. Um, our black comrades are disproportionately represented in the unhoused population as well in the jails. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know what else to say. Um, you know, like LA has been voted the meanest city in America in terms of the way it treats its poor people. And all of you guys are complicit. Heather Hutt, shame on you. Uh, I love y'all trying to distance yourselves. Um, we see that 4118 motion. We see that. We see you working with Buscaino. It's the same story over and over again. And you can go again. into general. Oh, I'm done. No resignations, no meeting, y'all. Okay, thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 5195. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Yes, hi. Uh, general public comment, please. Of course. You have one minute. Please begin. Thank you. My name is Jasmine Quesada. I'm a homeowner in Boyle Heights and a constituent of CD14. My neighborhood tract is bisected by the 560 and 101 freeways and is a site for constant illegal dumping and abandoned vehicles being chopped up in the alley behind my house. I tried calling LA Sanitation and Parking Enforcement, can't get any services. So I thought, let me stop by my council member's Boyle Heights office during business hours to get some help. Door was locked, lights off, no one there to listen to my concerns. If you don't have the decency to do the right thing and resign, Kevin, then at least do the fucking job we are paying you to do. I don't want my taxpayer money going into a hole to fund whatever safe house you're coked out at right now. Also, our indigenous community in this city and everywhere is beautiful and vibrant and makes me proud to be a Chicana in this city. El que está feo, eres tú, Kevin. El más feo de todo. My condolences to whatever romantic partner you may have that they have to put up with your ugly face. I don't need any more time. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 2084. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, hi, my name is Ellen Dent with Animal Alliance Network on behalf of Plant Based Treaty. And I'd like to speak on item number 27 and also do general comments. Sure. So you have a minute for both of those. Please begin. Okay. First of all, um, I want to thank Councilmember Paul Kratz and Councilmember Marquise Harris Dawson for introducing uh, this measure. Um, it's so incredibly important that we do this. Um, this is what we need. I'm a mother of a three year old child. I want her to have a future that is worth living on this planet. So um, I just want to thank you all so much for hearing this resolution, um, for hopefully passing this resolution, because it is absolutely the change that we need. This is absolutely 100% the, the change that your constituents need and beyond, and you will be pioneering this. We know that climate change um, is caused by greenhouse gases and that animal agriculture causes more greenhouse gases than the whole transportation system combined. This is ICCC facts. So please um, stop deforestation, stop the loss of biodiversity, and help save our planet for the future life on it. Um, I'd like to move on to my general comment. Of course, please go ahead. Um, okay, as an African American woman, I'm completely appalled by what has happened in City Council with uh, you know Mary Martinez, uh, De Leon, and Cidio, and uh, you know I just. I hope that this gets resolved quickly, um, as quickly as possible so that we can move on and do what's best for our city and restore the faith of the people. Um, so I, as somebody who has been called names myself, uh, I just want to say that it's absolutely wrong and, and to stand by complacently and listen to that or even take part in a conversation where such ugly things were said. It's absolutely wrong. Um, so please, uh, you know, make this make this time positive and please endorse the plant based treaty. Please pass the plant based treaty resolution. And, um, you know, I just appreciate you all. And I'm proud to be an L.A. resident. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comments. Speaker with the last four digits, 0981. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, I'd like to speak on item 27, public comment. Sure, so you have one minute for each. Please begin. My name is Zora Fahim, and I'm the founder of Los Angeles Alliance for Animals. Uh, we are a political action group 
and we strongly urge the passage of the plant-based treaty. Climate change is real and the adoption of the plant-based treaty as a, is a companion to the UN FCC Paris Agreement will put food systems at the heart of combating the climate crisis. The treaty aims to halt the widespread degradation of critical ecosystems caused by animal agriculture, to promote a shift to more healthy, sustainable plant-based diets, and to actively reverse damage done to planetary functions, ecosystem services, and biodiversity. The plant-based treaty recognizes that no one single country can tackle the ecological impact of animal agriculture by itself. A global solution to a global emergency is essential to avert a climate catastrophe. Please pass this um, plant-based treaty. We are in full support of it. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want your minute of general? Yes. Um, I just wanted to mention that I stand in solidarity with everyone. Um, it is egregious to have anyone, um, you know, to, it, it, I'm just so angry that racist, racist comments were uh, said recently. It's rather appalling and I stand in solidarity with everyone because it belongs in no society. It's unacceptable. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits of 5436, please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? We can. Which items would you like to speak on? Uh, I'll do all available items and general public comment. Okay, so you have three minutes for items 1 to 11 and 24 to 43. Please stay on topic, and then we'll go to one minute of general public comment after that. So please begin. Yeah, okay. Uh, lots of people dumping on uh, the evil villains, Nuri, Katie, Ellen, Cedillo, but I'll start with some people who weren't on the tapes. Let's start with item number 24, um, independent redistricting. Bob Blumenfeld, don't think we forgot about you. You picked a valley secessionist, a racist movement. You picked a valley secessionist to be your commissioner on the redistricting. And what did your commissioner do? He tried to gerrymander out Latinos and renters in your district. You're no fucking difference than the people on that tape, Bob. You need to resign too. Item 25, Heather Hutt <laughs> says she's not a puppet. First thing she does on the city council, whole bunch of 4118s, a racist movement, a racist motion against black people, Latino people, ableist, ageist, horrific violence. What was captured on those tapes was cruelty. And every 4118 motion is more of that same cruelty that's on those tapes. Heather, you should resign. You're a plant from the three conspirators on that tape. You need to resign too. 28, correct. Very desperately trying to put all these animal motions up uh, after he's the one who caused the problem in the first place. His horrific and appalling mismanagement and covering up of fraud and abuse at the animal shelters. Uh, Paul Koretz, to put it simply, is a puppy killer. And he's also another one of the horrifically anti-black corrupt council members on the city council who on the day those tapes leaked, sent out a totally racist email, campaign email about a Kenneth Mejia staffer. Koretz also compared George Floyd's public execution to property damage on Melrose. Koretz, you should resign too. You're, you're a disgusting, disgraceful person. Uh, number 34, let's get to Buckets and Staffer B. Two more disgraces. Everyone's saying this council is illegitimate because of what happened. They've been illegitimate since the day City Staffer B was sat on this council. How is that guy allowed to be here? He was in Vegas taking bribes with Englander. All of you are corrupt and buckets, you sick fucking loser. You're not even going to be here in a month and you're still trying to be a fucking sadistic freak. Fuck you, Joe, you piece of shit. 42, 41, redis or, uh, cancel expansion. Yeah, the cancel council should be expanded, but it's really disappointing. It's really disappointing that Bonin and Marquise and Nithi are here today. None of this should be going on. You should have shut this shit down like you said you were going to. 
This was all, this is a totally illegitimate to meeting. You can go to general speaker if you wish. Oh, okay. General public comment. Let me get to Paul Koretz. Or sorry, Krikorian, the other shithead Paul. Krikorian loves to say everyone's an extremist. Oh, if you, if you don't subscribe to my neoliberal moderate, you're an extremist. Krikorian, how many of your fucking colleagues have to get indicted? How many have to be caught on tape for you to realize that you losers are the extremists? You're the sick ones who kill five pe unhoused people a day. You're the ones who let LAPD murder their own officer who found out about a gang rape by LAPD. You're the extremist, Krikorian. You and your band of racist, corrupt cronies. I yield my time. Fuck you. Okay. Next speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 5709. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, can you hear me? We can. Which items would you like to speak on? Item number 42, item number 43, and public comment. Very good. So you have two minutes for the items, followed by a minute for general public comment. Please begin. Okay, to start, I would like to start by saying that I, had, I was discriminated against as an African-American male by Nuri Martinez's office. December 30th, 2020, I sent an email to the ethics committee. No one ever responded to me. I then had the displeasure of moving to Mitch O'Farrell's district, March 16, 2021, when I contacted his office and his chief of staff did not assist me. I asked for her supervisor. Her name is Jean. She then called the police on me. Detective Grunlin, Detective Dumayas, and Detective Madro chased me down the street and called me a nigger. I emailed the ethics committee once again. No one ever responded to me. Later, moving on to the district to Paul Kikorian's area, another friend of mine had a displeasure to deal with Jill, who discriminated against her and did not provide any information regarding things she was looking for. When she sent an email to Mr. Paul Kikorian, he never responded. That, all, that email was sent August 5th, 2022. Also, regarding Mr. Dawson's office, as an African-American male, I just assumed that you would take more responsibility in this matter, and I con contacted your office regarding these emails no one ever responded to me. They just told me, oh, we're sorry that you have these emails. And that was actually a week ago that I contacted Mr. Dawson's office. I thought, you know, let me call the African American mail. Maybe he would look at these emails to see. So I just think that the ethics committee needs to be dismantled. This panel needs to be dismantled. Um, Nuri Martinez is gone, but Mitch O'Farrell, again, Gene called the police on me because I asked to speak with you. And to this day, you have not responded to the emails. The emails are dated March 16, 2021. Paul Kikorian, the email was dated to your office regarding discrimination, August 5th, 2022. But everyone is up here, and Paul Kikorian, you're on Twitter speaking about Nui Martinez, and your office ignores matters of discrimination. Whether you are aware of it or not, you've got the email, you could inquire. So I don't think that you are interested in matters of discrimination. Also, the city attorney's office filed, filed annoying telephone calls against me because I contacted LAPD because they used my name. And you you go to general and if it you was wish. Not me. So the ahead. general comment would be also, yes, general comment. The general comment also would be that this, this panel itself needs to be dismantled. And also people that are working in compliance with these agents, with these people, it doesn't help like the city attorney. It's no reason why your office should be using special prosecutors to file annoying calls on African-Americans who are calling in to speak to supervisors to let them know their names was used in police reports that they were never, ever there. But you appointed these special prosecutors with taxpayers' money city attorney who's there now speaking supposed to be so ethical and that's actually money waste management and it's a form of discrimination that you are actually in compliance with cases like that being litigated and my name is mr carter i'm sure you know who i am mr fewer thank you mm -hmm. speaker with the last four digits three seven seven nine please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on Hello? Can you hear me? We can. Which items would you like to speak on? Hi, ah, yes. 27 and another item, and uh, in addition to the general public comment, please. Okay, so that's two minutes on the items. I assume the other item is open for public comment and then uh, general public comment. So we'll start the clock at 2, and I'll let you know when we're ready to go to general. So please begin. 
Thank you so much. My name is Annie Abram, and I am with uh, Los Angeles for Animals. Um, if nothing else we have gathered today, we uh, see that uh, discrimination exudes discrimination as a hate exudes hate and peace exudes ha uh, peace. In order for us, and I stand in solidarity with all who are suffering, here today I ask and I'm urging that we do take the plant-based treaty forward as did um, you know, uh, Jane Velaz Mitchell and Council Member Paul Koretz had endorsed it. Uh, we definitely need to endorse it in order to start seeing peace in the world. We are destroying our planet. We are looking in front of us and not seeing the big picture when we do not address the plant-based treaty. This is a worldwide movement that we need to all adhere by in order to bring uh, to end drought, to end famine, to bring peace, to end discrimination. These are the, the roots of all problems. If nothing else had resonated, everybody's complaining about these horrors. And if we stop it from the root cause, we do not need to address it any further. Let's provide food for everyone. Let's provide water, 2,500 gallons of water for one hamburger. This is unsustainable. We have to think for ourselves, for the next future generation. This, these, these are essential. Plant-based treaty is a very unselfish and, and collective, holistic perspective of healing our planet, healing ourselves, and passing on a healthy planet to the next generation. Please pass on and endorse plant-based treaty and let's encourage others in the world to pass it on too. I'm sorry, did you say something? No, please go ahead. Uh, we're about to go into general public Thank comment you. though. So, Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much. Uh, awesome. And in, in order for us to, to obtain peace and end discrimination, we need to practice it every day from the most vulnerable ones, the animals, the children, the homeless, the elderly, the people of color, I've been discriminated and I know the pain, the horror of discrimination. This is why I highly, highly encourage everyone to go on plant-based treaty because we want to end the desertification, the, the ocean acidification. We want to end the climate disaster that is caused directly by animal agriculture. And it is also igniting fossil fuel and big pharma. We need to start taking care of ourselves by addressing the real issues. We need your help. Everybody here has the power to do so. Despite the discriminations and wrongs, let's end all discriminations from the root cause and let's endorse plant-based treaty. Be fair to all life and take care of everybody. Once again, I appreciate everyone who is hearing thank and thank you. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 7461. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, good afternoon. This is Tony Braswell. Uh, for identification purposes only, I'm a 20-year board member of Neighborhood Council Valley Village and served as president for 17 years. Um, I'm swimming upstream on this comment, but I want to extend my thanks to you all for keeping the city business moving. Um, I know this is a tough time, um, but when leaders step up and, and thank you for continuing to meet and keeping the business moving. Um, I'm speaking as a stakeholder today and I'm going to make that very clear. Um, I've been lucky to have representation from Paul Kikorian for many years and I would hope that he can be considered for city council president. Um, he's dedicated to the city. He's got a large knowledge base, a uh, broad scope of experience and good tenure with the city. And I think that's what we need right now. And even more important, I think his staff can help maintain his office if he is taking on additional duties of president. So a uh, quick comment, just hope you'll consider him. He's a great leader, great city councilman. And uh, I think he'd make our city proud at a time we really need. Thank you. Thank you, speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 2191. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 2191. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on.
Item 43 in general public comment, please. Very good. So you have a minute for each. Please begin. Um, in terms of uh, choosing your new president, uh, just looking at the 15 council members, uh, the only one that really stands out to me that would uh, be a good leader um, is John Lee, if he's willing to do that. He was the only one to stand up against uh, the mandates, you know, that were unconstitutional and discriminatory about having a vaccine passport to go into businesses. Uh, he was also the one to say no to the whole defunding of police. Uh, you know, our crime is through the roof. Um, and, you know, it's hard. It's hard to be the one to stand alone. I know Busca, you know, also voted no on both of those. Uh, but, you know, when everybody else is saying, do this, do this, you know, it's easy to go along with the crowd. And it's hard to stand alone and stand for what's right and what's ethical. And I support police. I want the the council to support police. We need more police. I mean, and you can go like I said, the crime is so high. I mean, we have the homeless also ruining our parks and our sidewalks. I mean, what about our children? And, you know, at our local Popeye's restaurant, there was a homeless man defecating right by the front counter the other day. Um, and when you're thinking about who to choose for the president, definitely not Councilwoman Monica Rodriguez. Um, she is a key person involved in an FBI investigation about um, an obstruction of justice. You know, she's the head of public safety, but she doesn't support LAPD. She, she doesn't even support her own local division. And to the council, you need to get rid of all these crazy vaccine mandates that are still in place, you know, especially for city workers. As you know, it doesn't stop the spread or transmission of COVID. We know that now. And the side effects like heart conditions, it, uh, myocarditis, it's crazy. And is the city going to pay for the injuries of these city workers who were coerced uh, into taking these shots? And as you know, there's 880 officers. Thank you. Uh, we don't, we're Thank short you. 880 Thank you. officers. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 9933. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, this is Cesar Acevedo. I'd like to speak on the plant-based treaty, number 27. Very good, you have a minute, please begin. Thank you, council. We would love for the city, for the council to endorse the plant-based treaty. It is the future and our city needs it. We can lay down the blueprint worldwide because this is a worldwide issue of global warming. So we need to see the plant-based treaty go through and see how it can start to heal not only our city, but all around and be the example. We all felt the, the hottest summer ever and it's only gonna get worse and it's gonna get worse. So we need to start to correct this issue and be a part of the solution and not as a part of the problem before it is too late. And that's why I, as co-director of Animal Alliance Network and LA Fish Save, ask that you endorse the plant-based treaty. And I echo everything that Jane and everyone has said today. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 2267. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, oh, hi. Um, I'd like to comment on agenda item 41 and make a general comment. Very good, you have a minute for each. Please begin. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Danielle Langlois. I'm not going to waste time by insulting absent council members. So I hope you'll listen with an open heart and mind. I've called in today to ask you to add an amendment to item 41, council expansion. As you know, chronic issues with our elected officials in LA politics have seriously undermined public trust. It's terribly sad to witness and it's distressing. But the good news is that there are a number of things we can do. So let's use this as a long overdue opportunity to give the people of Los Angeles more agency and restore trust with our elected representatives. Let's explore all of our options. The old ways aren't serving us anymore. We're not gonna forget. And even if we could, outside corporate interests will be more than happy to continue to fan the flames of racial tension in order to derail any actual legislative progress you try to achieve. I strongly encourage the members of this council to amend item 41, to explore all the options and create a charter review commission with the stated goal of restoring trust. I'll move on to general comments. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
The tape of Nuri's racist rant should have been released a year ago. Based on the timing, whoever released it probably didn't care about racism at all. They did it to derail actual legislative progress and sabotage LA's pro-environment agenda. Please address the racism, but remain vigilant on the looming climate crisis. I know there, there are a lot of staff members in LA City Council that are working hard to get important climate change and environmental policies passed in the next few weeks. Ban oil drilling, citywide wildlife corridors, build decarbonization ordinances for new and existing buildings, ban styrofoam, no new gas station permit. I know you're in crisis, but please do not give in to big oil, big real estate, big plastics, and big methane. Make Angelinos proud. Use your positions of power to help save our habitable climate and fight corruption. Even if it jeopardizes your chances at re-election, we need you to be the heroes we need. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thank you. We appreciate it. Speaker with the last four digits, 5162. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. I would like to uh, have general public comment. Very good. You have a minute. Please begin. Hi, my name is Michael Henry Hayden. I want to join the chorus of voices calling for Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo to resign immediately. Their blatant attempts to redistrict our city for their own personal benefit and at the explicit expense of minority district is a betrayal of the public trust. I also want to point out that Cedillo helped usher in a project at Avenue 34 in Lincoln Heights with a blatantly false environmental review which ignored city planning's index of potentially hazardous properties which concluded that the site would likely be contaminated. It is now confirmed to be highly toxic, and we discovered that it was formerly an illegal toxic waste dump, which LA had previously prosecuted but ignored and hid those facts. Gil Cedillo wrote a letter in 2017 requesting to waive the required public hearing for this project. Our neighborhood calls this lot the sick land, and if Cedillo hadn't attempted to silence the public, we would have called out this dangerous project years earlier. Cedillo also secured 20 million tax-free TEFRA funds for this project, which this council approved, and then he tried to secure $105 million in TEPRA funds under a motion that completely mischaracterized the project. Our community made Cedillo well aware of the risks of the toxicity that this project posed before he advanced these dishonest motions. There's a similar motion today by Cedillo on today's agenda for TEPRA funding. Uh, the council has an opportunity to do better yes, and should and begin you, by scrutiny and you have a every minute action for that Cedillo has approved. You have a, a, a minute for general additional if you wish it, Speaker. Okay, I just wanted to say that um, uh, I, I was just about done with my statement, but I was saying that the council has an opportunity to do better and should begin by scrutinizing every action that Cedillo has approved or proposed. He and De Leon have no place representing the people of LA. And I encourage everybody to look into um, situations like this one that our neighborhood has been very vocal about for the past two years and has written to the council and spoken at the council many times about um, it's a dangerous project and, and Cedillo has been complicit in silencing the public and, and preventing our concerns from being heard. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 1403. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. <laughs> yes. All items and the general public comment period. So you have three minutes for items 1 through 11 and 24 through 43. Please stay on topic, followed by a minute for general public comment. Please begin. Yes, thank you, co-conspirator. So, why don't we have two motions? Can you give me those motions, sir? Oh, right here, Mr. Puppet. Thank you. Yes, we have a motion to appoint a new council president. No, we have two motions to file for a new council president. <laughs> What's wrong, Mitch? Is that chair a little too big for you? <laughs> so let's go over the candidates that we have. Uh, Gil Sedillo would make an excellent council president. His experience and his movement for the immigrant community is, excuse me, what? <laughs> um, he's one of the guys in trouble. Oh, okay, we'll take him off the list. I'm sorry. I recommend Kevin DeLeon to be the next council president. <laughs> he has fought for immigrant rights, environmental justice, and change for all Angelinos. <laughs> uh, he also got busted from the tape. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, I will have to recommend the retention of Nuri Luisa Martinez. 
Nuri knows about poverty. She builds excellent projects. Even though they're under park, she's still making Van Eyes look very pretty. <laughs> um, she's on the tape. She got busted. Oh, damn. <laughs> okay, then I recommend Heather Hunt to be the next council president. Heather Hunt has vast experience. Uh, same thing. She's mentioned on the tape. What? <laughs> damn. <laughs> All right, I recommend Kern DeMille Price Jr. Kern DeMille Price Jr. has served honorably, first with the city of Inglewood, <laughs> then in the state legislature, the state senate. <laughs> Is that okay? <laughs> well, it's fine. <laughs> yes. Now, he's an African-American fighter for the community. <laughs> now, I know some of you are asking, what the fuck was up with that voter registration on his first wife going to his second wife's house? <laughs> well, we could explain that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you great pleasure. Mr. Jose Wazar is in the house today. Hey! <laughs> Thank you, can everybody. We, can, can we stick uh, with the items? Uh, uh, hi. Sticker? Oh, 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 hi, Scruff fan. Yeah, good to, good to hear from you. Good to hear. Good to see you all. Uh, um, okay. Um, definitely, um, Current price is the right choice to be the, 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 the what do you call it? <laughs> council president. Uh, the council president. Um, because, okay, you can go into general uh, speaker. You, well, well, hold on, asshole. I, you know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Your time is up, sir. Now, let's get to the general comments. <laughs> yes. Nithia, you lied to me. <laughs> Marquisi. With your beautiful goat beard, you lied to me. <laughs> you promised to shut this meeting down until my two good buddies resign. But you don't understand, Kevin and Gil. They're not going to resign. They sent me a message. They told me to tell you to go fuck yourselves in the fucking ass. Come and get me, they said. Kevin's going to stay and fight for the community. You'll never get him off the council. <laughs> he will continue to get his salary. And thank you, Rudy Martinez, for putting up Kevin and giving him a place to rest. God knows the man has been through too much stress. Okay, your time has expired, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 0370. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 0370. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. So, Speaker, if you're there, please unmute right now. We'll have <coughs> yeah, I, I'm here. Good morning. This is Carlos Montes. I'd like to do a public comment and item number. Let's see here. What was it? I forgot the number on the on the expanding the districts. Okay, so that's item, uh, I think that's item... 20, 31, but anyway, oh, uh, no, no, sorry, 20, 24, yeah. it's, I know what it is, 24, so we'll give you a minute for that, and then um, a minute for Joe, yeah, please is, go uh, ahead. Yeah, yeah, this is Carlos Montes, I live in Bojais, come from the District 14, <clears throat> I also wanted to uh, to submit a community impact st statement from the Bojais uh, City Hall, I don't know if I get extra time for that, that's my question, yeah, so I'm speaking in, uh, excuse me, I'm just, <clears throat> on behalf of the Bull Heights Neighborhood Council. I'm a member of the Neighborhood Council. I was authorized by the president who's at work, John Echeverria, <clears throat> to basically, <clears throat> excuse me, let you know that Friday night we had a special meeting and we did vote to condemn the racist remarks of the city council folks and to call for the resignation of Gil Cedillo and Kevin De Leon. <clears throat> As a Chicano uh, advocate in the past who advocated for Chicano representation. I am appalled of these racist comments, not only against blacks, because blacks have always stood on our, with us in the you Chicano go, community. You can go to general. And also, yeah, oh, okay. Yes, so, uh, you know, I've always fought for the extension of uh, the city council. I think 14 is too small. Chicago has like 70 or 80 older people. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. And uh, I lost my trend of thought here. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's really atrocious, uh, you know, that the comments against our Oaxacan community, indigenous community, LGBT community, they've got to resign. Uh, we 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 uh, we need to expand the city council, elect some new progressive uh, Chicana Chicano candidates. So the Bolhai Neighborhood Council will submit a community impact statement to upload to the uh, LA uh, city agenda. And um, thank you very much. We stand in solid there with the blacks. Speaker with the last four digits, five, six, nine, four. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Um, I would like to speak on general public comment, please. Absolutely, so you have a minute, please begin. Hi, good afternoon, council. It doesn't surprise me that racism exists in both political parties, Democrat and Republican. Like we've always been taught was that Republicans are racist, but now we see both sides of the aisle are racist. Now, this community has been begging the city council to offer public comment by telephone to provide equal access to the community of Los Angeles. Majority of the people don't have access to transportation to drive to uh, city council chambers to make a public comment in person. And so I would like to ask that you guys make public comment available for everyone, including the ones that cannot attend the meeting. And I would like to see you guys um, allow public comment for everyone to speak instead of rushing the public comment like Nuri Martinez has done. So thank you. I would like you to please make thank public you. comment available for yourself. And thank you. Okay. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 1881. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Yes. Good morning. Can you hear me? Or good midday? Hi. Which items would you like to speak on? Yes, all items, and thank you for finally letting me speak. Okay, so you have three minutes for items 1 through 11 and 24 through 43, followed by a minute for general, so please begin. Thank you, Ms. Bobble, and I hope you'll stay out of my way. Uh, first of all, uh, to all those speakers who spoke this morning, who I know really love this city, that's why I live in this city, because of what your opinions are and the way you feel about the how this city is governed. With that, I believe that the city should be divided by uh, at least uh, 21 councils to 25 councils. That way, the people that feel like uh, their voice isn't heard, uh, I think that we can incorporate their uh, voices if we go to 21 to 25 uh, city councils, as long as they're divided properly and, over, and there's oversight on that. Um, in regards to the presidency, uh, you know, uh, Mr. O'Farrell, you're a kind and good man. I think you do a great job. And uh, Mr. Kikorian, I feel that you would do a good job. But where were you? Where were you when uh, Ms. Martinez was spreading her, her evilness and when she was denying public comment during the COVID section? Uh, no one spoke out. You folks all knew what she was doing. You all knew what she was all about. But yet you folks were uh, only interested in what was best for you folks. Uh, is it time for public comment? Sure, please go ahead. Mr. Bobble, Mr. Bobble, you know, I forgive you, but because you sat right there with Ms. Martinez and you were part of the evil scheme to deny public speaking, you, you, sir, must resign. You must step down and go somewhere else. Go back to your office, go back wherever you have to go. But we will not cleanse this council if we leave people like you who assist those who commit the evil and uh, you stand around pretending like you don't know anything about it. You knew what was happening. You know what, Ms. Martinez. I've been fighting her for many, many years and her predecessor. And what the hell do you do? You know, you just jump right in there with them. So Mr. Bobble, do the right thing. You step down, you, uh, you go on with your career and uh, you know, let somebody else with decency and honor come in and, 
I'll let them uh, speak for the council. Uh, with that, I, I just, you know, when I hear people say that, uh, you know, the council shouldn't have met, you have to meet. There's 4 million people that you represent. And I was down there at City Hall. There was 100 people. Yes, and their voices need to be heard too. But there are 4 thank, million thank, of us who can Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 8319. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, this is Ted Treminsky, District 14 resident. I'll be speaking on uh, items 24, 42, and 43 and public comments. Um, so you have um, three minutes for the items, followed by a minute for general. Please begin. Great. For item 24, we obviously need an independent redistricting committee. The people do not trust this council to oversee this redistricting. The language of this motion is super sketchy when it comes to the qualifications of the commission, especially because the selection of the commissioner's method is so untethered from the direct voice of the people. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, for items 42 and 43, it is imperative that you do not hold an election until after Cedillo and Kevin DeLeon resign. Uh, shut this meeting down right now. Like they, they have to go. Um, as far as item 12 goes, when was the public given space to comment on this item? Was it last week when the uh, city hall chambers were packed? And I personally was denied entrance because the chamber was full. Half a million dollars rubber stamped to the LAPD from an unclaimed monies while almost a quarter of the council is embroiled in a racist scandal so, is so disturbing. I, I think you're on item 12, which is fine, but we've already voted on that. So we can do it in general if you wish. Uh, that's right. I, I can go to general. Okay. So we'll give you a minute for general. Please, please continue. Great. Why was today's meeting delayed with no notice to the public? At least the, uh, the, uh, it wasn't on YouTube for uh, a bit. It's really discouraging to public comment. Uh, it's also disparaging when we see so many city council members engaging conversations with their staffers, Bloomfield Lee, Harris Dawson O'Farrell, the court Gian, uh, Raman. It, it's really clear you don't care what's going on with the public. Do we even have quorum right now? Uh, we don't have 10 people on my Zoom screen and we haven't for most of this meeting. Um, we've had many members just drop off the call, it seems, but, but that, that is seemingly not a big deal that we don't have quorum during public comment. Uh, again, I'm really disparaged by this meeting happening. I'm confused why it continues to go on as members leave, uh, really disturbed by what's happening at this, uh, chamber right now. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 8553. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 8553. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. One more time, speaker with the last four digits, 8553. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, I'm so sorry. I was pressing the wrong star and the wrong number. I am here. Okay. Hello. Which, yes, which items would you like um, to speak on? I would like to speak on 43. Uh, 24, I believe, is the one for the expansion of the council. If I'm wrong, um, let me know. Uh, or an independent redistricting is one or the other. Okay. And so then the um, 27 on um, plant-based treaty and homelessness for general comment. Okay, so you're at three minutes, followed by a minute for general. So please go ahead. Okay, so um, I 
absolutely we do need to choose a new president for the council and i do agree with the one of the callers that john lee should be con strong consideration and it's because he's both pro landlord and pro tenant and he definitely wants better mediation between tenant and landlord there's too much rhetoric in the los angeles housing department um really against landlords it's been very hard as a landlord to even get anybody on the phone i usually wait about an hour and 10 minutes before anybody answers and when i go there they're not working on fridays and uh, which is my day off and and i always need help from somebody and he definitely would promote some sort of mediation services with lahd they need to learn how to mediate between tenants and landlords which would definitely reduce any move to evict if, if a landlord is considering that there is a way to mediate, and I am a mediator with DCFS, and I assist definitely with engagement and to, to, to discuss what strengths our tenants have and what strengths our landlords have. And um, we need to do that with John Lee because we also have worries as tenants and we have worries as landlords, and we need to come together and mediate. And it's just too much underpinning. I believe that our mayor has been very um, biased against landlords. I believe that. Um, Mayor, um, the person running for mayor, um, Karen Bass, is biased against landlords. And I believe this is why I'm voting for Rick Caruso, because I believe he brings a bit more business sense to the idea. So John Lee is someone I fully promote to be president. Um, moving on to expanding the, um, I can believe it's 24 independent redistricting and expanding the council. Either way, any expansion of the council needs to be done with first training the council. Everybody needs to be trained about their implicit biases because there have always been serious biases by every member. It doesn't matter where they come from, who they are. There are biases among each of you. And I've wondered if you've been trained in biases and what those are. I'm not surprised as to Nuri Martinez's own comments because she's one who's primarily been very biased over her term. Um, so any expansion needs to come first with building trust. It starts with engaging the public. It starts with building bridges. And I don't see that happening. People are angry. They're hurt. They're overwhelmed. Um, and I think it's really important that we come together in a really cohesive manner. And I think the only way to do it is by adopting a mediation system, just like the Department of Children and Family Services did. We do core practice model. We sit down with our clients. We talk about who they are. We listen to their story. We listen to their worries. And then we build a case plan that's cohesive to their needs. And that's something that the city council needs to really look at before even expanding or even making yourself way bigger than you are now. Uh, so for plant-based treating, okay. number you 27. You, you can go to general public comment. Please continue. Okay. Okay. So we have 552,000 homeless people nationwide. And um, but yet we have 1.5 million homes that are abandoned in the nation. 1.5 million homes that sit empty that we could all be working with multiple municipalities to tap into instead of trying to build $850,000 units for our homeless. We need to also look at using the regional center uh, for the state to assess our homeless for um, any kind of cognitive disabilities because they can really help housing our cognitively delayed homeless individuals. Um, we have at least 20% of our homeless from out of state. Many of them come here, pushed by out of state municipalities to come here for services. We need to start looking and maybe sending them back and have those states take responsibility for their own homeless individuals. I kid you not, I see people coming here looking for services from other municipalities being bused here, uh, flown here, whatever the case is, through my own job. Thank you. Thank so you, we... Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 8271. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 8271. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. One more time. Speaker with the last four digits, 8271. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on.
So, Speaker, you please unmute yourself right now. We'll move on to the next person. Okay, I think we'll have to move on. Speaker with the last four digits, 5177. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker, please identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker, you can there? you hear me? Yes, we can. Which items would you like to speak on? Hello? Hi, yeah. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Uh, pub public speaking. You're fading Hello? it. We're, you're, you, we kind of lost you here and there. So which items would you like to speak on? Uh, public speaking. Okay, general public comment. We'll set it for a minute. Please yes. go ahead. Well, thank you, first of all, for keeping the city business uh, moving along. Um, I just wanted to say uh, L.A. is not a safe place right now. People are being attacked every day by homeless people, smashing grabs are on the rise, home invasion, and I don't see much being done. Instead, you are all worried about what three city council people said. Um, that's what's wrong with the city. And those protesting in front of uh, Councilman Devin, uh, Kevin DeLeon's house, you need to stop. You know, this is ridiculous. You need to put that same energy when a hardworking paletero or a hardworking uh, taco stand, um, the, when they're being attacked, beaten, or robbed. We don't see you on TV, do we? Councilman DeLeon, um, it's ultimately your decision, but we ask that you do not resign. You've done so much for the community of El Sereno. I've lived there more than 20 years. You cleaned up the area when Jose Weezar didn't do anything. Thank you, Speaker. You did. You stepped up. Thank you, Speaker. <laughs> speaker with the last four digits, 1172. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Once again, speaker with the last four digits, 1172. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker, speaker are you there? So you're, you're, you're breaking up to the point where we really can't hear you. So if you can ver... So we, yeah, we can't hear you. So we'll have to, you can call back if you want, but we really can't hear you. Speaker with the last four digits, 5605. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hello? Yeah, I'll speak on item 24 in general public comment. Excellent. So we'll give you one minute for each. Please go ahead. Okay. So my name is Kiernan. I called in today to say that Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo should resign immediately. There is nothing, not even the creation of an independent redistricting commission that can take precedence over resignation because somehow the racism in these recordings outweighed the corruption. I initially wanted to call in and recite some of the things that were said in that meeting to emphasize why people are so intense on these resignations but I can't even bring myself to repeat the remarks. There's over an hour of recordings with anti-black, anti-gay remarks, remarks against the Jewish community, against the Mohawkin community, against so many groups of Angelinos, and that isn't including the directly offensive and abhorrent remarks made about their own fellow council members and their children. De Leon and Cedillo weren't just observers of this conversation, they were participants in it, and they deserve to face consequences for it. The fact that they haven't resigned yet is already an embarrassment. The fact that the president of the United States had to chime in on this is an embarrassment. How far are you willing to drag this out? You said you're going to listen to every public comment today, you Mitch. Can go to general. I'm glad you think that's a step towards healing, but healing can only happen after justice. As you find yourself listening to hour two or hour three or hour four of public comment, and you find yourself growing numb to the unanimous calls for your colleagues' resignation, 
I hope you're able to remind yourself of just how disgusting and disappointing this entire situation is and how close you have been to it every step of the way. You're on the tapes as Nuri's boy, and I know you've got tapes of your own out there too. And the words of council member Mike Bonin last week, first they must resign and then ask for forgiveness. There's no way forward for Los Angeles politics until that happens. I yield the rest of my time. Speaker with the last four digits, 9631. Please unmute yourself and Thank identify you. the items you'd like to speak on. I'd like to speak briefly on item number 34 and then general comment. Very good. You have a minute for each. Please begin. Um, I would definitely urge um, Heather Hutt and Joe Bastiano to look at Hayes Davenport's Twitter thread from October 15th um, regarding a, a gentleman named Bobby who's a resident whose car was repossessed. 41.18 needlessly discriminates against residents, obviously disproportionately residents of color perpetually repressed by motions like this. And it's what happens when you use and expand 41.18 in place of long-term solutions. So, you know, if you will vote yes on this, which I'm guessing you will, please look at that thread and what your vote will have um, as an impact on real people in this community. And do you um, want general public comment, Speaker? Apparently not. I think you've, the speaker's hung up. So we can go on to the next speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, zero, 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 zero. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Which items would you like to speak on? Thank you, item 41 and general comment. Very good, so you have a minute for each. Please go ahead. Thank you. My name is Tara Perry, I'm with Black Pack, and I'm uh, calling in support of item 41 to expand the council. Along with population analysis, there should be an ethnic impact analysis uh, to address the obvious attacks on the population and political influence of Black Los Angeles. The population of Black Los Angeles has been reduced to more than half over the last two decades. And this is a crisis that can be stemmed with equitable analysis and solutions. Uh, in addition, how much time do I have left, uh, council member? Uh, Kevin DeLeon and Gil Cedillo must resign today. Uh, moving on to general comment. Yes. It's important. Thank you. It's important to understand the recent events of confirmed racism for members of this city council did not happen in a vacuum. It's another event in a long pattern of policy-based anti-blackness. But will the resignations of the involved parties fix the harms that their racist perspectives have caused when, when implemented as policy agendas? Fulfilling the goals of Mayor Garcetti's uh, reparations commission should be the priority of this Los Angeles City Council commitment to heal and preserve black Los Angeles community and become more than rhetorical pandering. The city of Los Angeles, a city known to lead the country in justice based initiatives could and should set the municipal president for reversing its pr present course of policy based anti black American systemic racism, a direction that could lead to the extinction of black Angeles if left unchecked. Immediately, there needs to be an implementation of a local office of Freeman Affairs to not only conduct the research to analyze the negative impacts of racist policymakers, but to task, to, but be tasked with the Thank distribution you. of resources set Thank aside for my Thank community. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Black Lives needs to be served. Thank you. So for the public, we've got a little IT uh, glitch. We'll please hold and we'll take care of it. So let's take a minute or so, I hope.
All right, I think we're gonna be able to restart. We for... can't hear the council chambers. If if you're speaking now, we can't hear it. Yes, we're having a tiny IT glitch. We should restart very soon. Um, are, you, there, are the members able to hear me? Yes, okay. now we can. So it should be just a moment. Okay, we're gonna restart. Speaker with the last four digits, 8346. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 8346. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. So, yes, uh, general, general public comment? Sure, so you have a minute, please begin. Yes, um, thank you for taking my call. <clears throat> I hear, my name is David Ibarra. I'm from the east side of Los Angeles. I hear the Los Angeles City Council constantly complaining about racism. Well, if you want to get, ri if you want to get rid of racism in Los Angeles, you have to be consistent. There is something in the city of Los Angeles called black racism and no one is talking about it. Dozens of Asian Americans have been beaten by the hands of blacks. Dozens of Mexican fruit vendors have been beaten by the hand of blacks. And yet the Los Angeles City Council has failed to denounce black racism in Los Angeles. This whole garbage of systemic, systemic racism is a lie. It doesn't exist. Enough with the black racism. It's a double standard. Thank you, thank, thank you Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 3721. Please uh, unmute, unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 3721. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi. One more time, speaker. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Yes, hello. My name is Michael, can you hear me? We can, which items hello? would you like to speak on? Uh, I'd like to speak on the redistricting sure. uh, issue. And also, I'd like to speak on um, the um, uh, item 12. Okay. Is well, that the redistrict one? So uh, we, we voted on 12. I think you mean 24. So um, oh, we'll give well, you a minute uh, for item 24, yes, and if you wish, a minute for general. So please begin. Okay. Um, I live in uh, District 14. Um, I own a home in District 14. I live in Lincoln Heights, and I own a home in El Sereno. Um, I've been a citizen and resident of Lincoln Heights all my life, over 50 years. I'm a voter, a registered, and a volunteer in the community. Um, the neighborhood councils aren't being listened to. There's 17, 72 neighborhood councils. Divide those councils by three, and get a 24-member council. Um, the reason why Cedillo is not elected, re-elected, was because of his arrogance, his corruption with developers. There needs to be some kind of audit between developers and council members and contributions to campaigns, because that's how you guys operate. Um, that was not only a revelation on racism, it was a, re a revelation in the political backroom gerrymandering that goes on. I recommend that every citizen contact the federal representatives and demand a federal investigation of city hall because the city attorney included with his recommendations can conduct meetings in private or, or to eliminate the public or from public com communication is ridiculous um uh, you cannot um make poverty illegal and that's what you guys are doing. You're making poverty illegal by, by, by putting homeless people in three by four living, living arrangements and calling yourselves champions of homelessness. That's bullshit. Councilman Cedillo and Councilman De Leon do not represent the communities. What the hell does Boyle Heights have to do with Eagle Rock? What the hell does that have to do? 
the man is not representing his community. Cedillo represents developers, regardless if they're contaminated and people shouldn't be there. He doesn't give a shit about the children who go to school across that street. And you guys are all complicit. You're all complicit in this. And it's coming down, okay? It's time for you to listen to the neighborhood councils, listen to the people and represent them rather than the interests of the people that fund your campaigns. So this bullshit is over. And it's not just Black Lives Matter. It's thank not you. just black people. Thank you, Speaker. Okay? Yes, thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 2251. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Check, check. Uh, yeah, I'd like to talk about the plant-based treaty and uh, homelessness and general public comment. Okay, so that's two minutes for those items, which are, um, second one is 31. So two minutes for the items and one minute for general. Please begin. Thank you. With respect to those that are houseless and live on the streets and the idea of using increased police to solve that issue, uh, we all know that any amount of life loss is precious, especially if we happen to know them. And with respect to the police, of course, the amount of negative stories and lives lost in confronting the houseless population is one life too many for me. Um, and I'd support the countless organizations and positive ideas using renovated buildings, uh, therapy, and other resources to give them whatever services they need in order to regain their balance in life, which would prevent any amount of crime, even if it's a small amount of crime that I know them to do. Uh, in regards to the plant-based treaty, Tolstoy once said, everyone wants to change the world, but no one wants to change. So if we adopt the plant-based treaty, we won't just be wanting a better world. We'll be putting long-term solutions into effect that immediately improve our planet and city. And as someone who wasn't always plant-based, I'd like to give compassion and benefit of the doubt to those who may have already tuned out as soon as you hear the term plant-based. But when I learned facts like if humans killed each other at the same rate, we kill other animals on this planet in 17 days, we all would be extinct. The plant-based treaty helps create an honest world without exploiting animals that continue to increase our risk of cancers, poisoning ourselves and our earth with their precious lives. So please choose compassion over convenience, inspire us to change ourselves, to change the world and choose the plant-based treaty, please. And last but not least, um, just for general comment. Sure. I am committed and I hope all of you are committed also to making this world free of exploitation, a world filled with compassion and everlasting persistence to pursue justice and heighten our collective empathy, to live in harmony with every animal, every human being, and this earth who just doesn't stop giving to us. So why would we ever stop giving to our planet? Much love and respect to everyone. Whether you disagree or agree, I love you all. Peace. Okay. Did you want to speak on general public comment, Speaker? No, I think he's... Yes, that was it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 3248. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, I guess I'm giving just a general comment. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, so my name is Kansa Jones Muhammad. I'm actually a commissioner on LA's Reparations Task Force. I'm not speaking in my capacity as a commissioner. However, I do hope that my words will resound um, with this body. Um, the, what is his name? Kevin DeLeon, Gil uh, Cedillo, they need to resign from LA City Council uh, before there is a movement by the people to actually recall them. Uh, there, the comments that were made by that particular cohort is a classic example of institutional racism that American freedmen have been subjected to since the compromise of 1877, leading to the genocide of our people, one generation after another. Anti-Black racism from the city's leadership will in no way be tolerated by Black Angelinos uh, who are dealing with the school to prison pipeline, intensifying homelessness, gentrification, a surge in hate crimes, underemployment, and unemployment. Thank you. Um, I really, really am just dismayed. Thank you, Speaker. 
Speaker with the last four digits, 5638. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Good afternoon. I would like to um, demand the um, resignation of Dillion and I forgot the other gentleman's name. Is that it, Speaker? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Which items did you want to speak on? I would like to call for the resignation of Kevin DeLeon and Gil Sadio. And I also would like to speak on the demand for reparations for Black American freedmen. Thank you. Um, yes, the, the comments by these gentlemen, De Leon and Sadio, were horrendous, but I would like to speak to the Black Los Angeles um, American family to use this as a call of action to unify. Um, this is nothing new for us. We dealt with this kind of specific racism towards, specifically towards Black Americans from the Latino community before. We've been dealing with it for a long time. And I urge you all to galvanize and to find new leadership amongst yourselves to be represented on this council uh, period. Uh, now I would like to also um, let the whole of Los Angeles know if you have a shred of decency, that, that, you will support. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 6855. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, hello, um, I'd like to speak on 4243 and general public comment. Sure, so you have two minutes for those items followed by a minute for general. Please begin. All right, uh, my name is David. I'm a CD14 constituent. Uh, the public outcry over the leaked tapes last week has made one thing very clear. Any action taken by this council with or without the disgraced members, Gil Cedillo and Kevin DeLeon present is illegitimate until they resign. If we end up choosing an acting president with only 10 seated members, that's over 1 million citizens of the city, including myself, that are going unrepresented in this major decision, and that's unacceptable. The fact that Mitch O'Farrell is using riot pigs to brutalize protesters outside of this meeting in order to solidify his slipping grasp on power while he's about to lose his election, the fact that he's using the bullshit excuse of COVID to keep the public out of the room while he's out in public maskless, after knowingly being exposed, mingling with crowds and children over the weekend, making plans to hold birthday celebrations at a restaurant that you had to cancel because you knew you were going to get bird dogs. It's transparent what you're doing, and it's pathetic. I've been watching the screen, and the attendance has fluctuated from 10, 9 to 8, and back and forth this entire time. No quorum. It's undemocratic. Uh, Nithya Marquise and Mike Bonin, I really don't understand why you're here. If you're going to pretend to stand with the public, those disparaged openly on the tapes, as well as those of us who are now in political limbo, likely for months until this situation gets sorted out, you should show some political courage and do it properly. Being here now shows that you care more for maintaining status quo, institutional legitimacy than for the people who have been hurt. Uh, I stand with solidarity with the LA Tennis Union, Black Lives Matter LA, and all the many other organizations and citizens calling for no resignations no meetings. I yield my time. Fuck y'all. Speaker with the last four digits, 4736. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hello. Hi. My name is Pete. Hi, I'm Paige Farson Roach. I'd like to speak on 27 in public comment, please. Sure, so you have a minute for each. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. We are in a climate crisis. I think many can agree to that. It's global. Plant-based treaty is a solution. Many scientists, Nobel laureates, politicians, athletes, healthcare professionals, and organization businesses, and celebrities have endorsed already over 600,000 individuals, 900 organizations, 200 groups from around the world, celebrities such as Paul McCartney, Ella Gandhi, Joaquin Phoenix, Savannah Lynch, Leona Lewis, Jerome 
Lynn, Alicia Silverstone. We like celebrities here in Los Angeles. I have two children who are 21 and 23 who are in a climate crisis, stressed out about their future, and they are building their futures now. I went plant-based seven years ago when my daughter came home and said, we need to make this change for the planet. So here is an opportunity for Los Angeles to be a leader in the world, along with the others who have already endorsed. And I you, urge you- I'm going to general if you wish. Please continue. Thank you. I also would like to say we have no room for politicians who are blatantly racist. I request the resignation of De Leon and Cedillo as soon as possible. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Speaker. Caller with the last four digits, 1108. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. <clears throat> yeah, uh, items 2842, 43 in general public comment. Sure, so you have three minutes for those items followed by a minute for general. Please begin, Speaker. Yes, Daniel Gus. My column is at Daniel Gus with two S's. Dot substack dot com. Uh, no, item number 28, Mr. Koretz, as I predicted, and I'll have a whole column about this next week, waits until 21 days before Election Day to request money for L.A. Animal Services. 21 days, because this son of a bitch, all he does is allow a crisis to fester until he needs it for political expediency. So item number 28, just so you know, you should approve it. But just know it's being used for political purposes only. Mr. Koretz created the problem at Animal Services. He single-handedly decides what goes on the agenda at the pause committee. Mr. Koretz misappropriated $1.8 million donated to the Animal Welfare Trust Fund. So all of the money, every goddamn dollar of it for item number 28 is only there because Mr. Koretz literally stole $1.5 million that could have prevented that suffering. And then think about that suffering. And I want everybody who's listening to this call, including you, David Zonizer, how about doing a story on why this money is being called for because Koretz waited until 21 days before the election to call for it. Not last year, not the year before, and only when he screwed up this contract with the glue. Uh, Kenneth Mejia for City Controller, item number 28, is a perfect example of that. This guy is a dirtbag, and he's only using this money to try to stay in office. Oh, and maybe get his wife another uh, six-figure job in City Hall. Uh, item number 42 and 43, I have a column out today. By the way, this vote is predetermined. It will be Paul Koretz, uh, excuse me, it will be Paul Krikorian as City Council President. You can bank on it. I guarantee it. It'll be Paul Krikorian, I guarantee it. Uh, uh, by the way, do the city council members know that the LA district attorney uh, executed a search warrant on Inglewood City Hall in July? Well, go read my excerpt from it in, in my column, danielgus.substack.com, where they outline what they were seeking. How did Mr. Uh, Price represent his relationship with Delbert Richardson Price to get benefits from the city of Inglewood. So be very careful. I, mean, I know one or you, two of you are going to symbolically vote for current price, but beware. Beware how much stuff is going on with Mr. Price. He is the person who I will bet my last buck on that he will be the person indicted next or that he will be indicted at some point. Uh, and, and, and those are those two things. Uh, so the question is, why are you going through the charade? Why are you still trying to screen people for vaccinations? Uh, I doubt that any of you actually have COVID. And you can go I to general doing if you wish. Because, you can go to general. So the big question is, why is Paul Koretz not rescinding his racist and homophobic comments about the murder victims of Ed Buck? He called these victims who were murdered by his donor, Ed Buck, he called them black hustlers, disadvantaged black hustlers. Well, what does the race or sexual orientation have to do with the fact that they were murdered, Mr. Koretz? 
why don't you rescind those racist and homophobic comments? Okay, so you made them. Why don't you rescind these racist homophobic comments, Mr. Koretz? Because you said them. I have them in my last column. They were recorded by Jasmine Kanek. And why doesn't Mr. Koretz return the blood money that he got from Ed Buck? This guy wants to be city controller? Are you kidding me? He is no different than De Leon, Cedillo, and Martinez. And uh, for some reason, everybody who's listening, thank Paul Koretz has not rescinded his racist... Thank, thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 9933. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Once again, speaker with the last four digits, 9933. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Once again, speaker, if you would like to speak on any items, please press star six to unmute yourself. You need to press star six right away or we're going to move on to the next speaker. Okay, I think we should probably move on. Let me just remind everybody in the public, if you're listening on multiple devices, please keep one ear to the phone because of the time delay. I want to make sure that you hear us right away when we call out your number to uh, speak. Speaker at the last four digits, 2988. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Which items would you like to speak on? Just on general. Okay, very good. So we'll set the clock for a minute. Please begin. Shame on all of you for throwing Sadio under the bus. He has done nothing wrong. He has not said any racist comments. I think people need to re-listen to the tapes. Uh, he's fought for civil rights for more than 40 years. He's a respectable and honorable man. Uh, didn't anyone listen to the tapes? He said nothing racist. Shame on all of you. He's out of office December the 12th because he lost the election. Leave him alone. Didn't anyone ever listen to the tapes? Stop saying he's a racist. This man is not a racist. He has fought for civil rights and for people's rights his entire career. This is very unfair that he's being thrown under the bus when he hasn't done anything wrong. He's fought for all of you. A shame on all of you. A shame on you. Thank, thank you, Speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 0391. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Uh, Mike Beck, can you hear me? Hello, yeah. you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Which items would you like to speak on? Yep, uh, the plant-based treaty. Sure, so that is 27, so you have a minute. Please begin. Yeah, thanks. Uh, my name is Curtis Vollmer. I'm the uh, legislative point with Compassionate Bay. We're a 501c4. We were behind a bill uh, state capital this year, uh, AB 2764, it would have put a moratorium on the construction and expansion of factory farms and slaughterhouses in the state. Didn't go very far, but got a lot of people talking. And I want to uh, um, thank you all for bringing this up. And I hope that you vote yes on this. Animal agriculture is one of the leading drivers of deforestation, desertification, ocean dead zones, wild species extinction, uh, world hunger, and obviously animal cruelty. It's great that more and more uh, governments and municipalities are, are calling for moratorium on the expansion of oil and gas. Um, everyone knows that that is a, a, a leading contributor to the growing climate crisis. Animal agriculture is number one or number two, depending on where you get your sources from. So we should be taking this seriously. Um, a less, less violent world is, is better for everyone, better for the animals, better for the environment, better you for our You can go health. to general if you wish to consider this. Thank you so much. Do you want yeah, no, your I yield my time. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Speaker identified as call-in user two. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. 
Agenda item 31 and general public comment. Very good. You have a minute for each. Please begin. Yes, I am a CD10 resident and agenda item 31 is regarding applying 4118 to several locations, specifically Venice Boulevard and Washington Boulevard underpass of the Santa Monica Freeway. Several public comments made today have indicated that supporting 4118 is making makes you anti-black. I support agenda item 31. I am not anti-black. These locations have are constantly under fire. We see YouTube, the encampment fires are numerous. These fires do not contribute to the upkeep and maintenance of the infrastructure. Please be advised, one of the locations is mere feet away from an already catastrophic infrastructure failure that occurred during the Northridge 1994 earthquake. And you can go to general. So continue, please. Failure to apply 4118 to these locations, specifically agenda item 31, will be the city's contrib contribution to the future infrastructure failure. Thank you. Thank you, speaker. Speaker with the last four digits, 8483. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 8483. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. So speaker, if you're there, please press star six right away or it will have to move on to the next speaker. So if you're listening, press star six right now. Okay, I think, I think we need to move on. Speaker with the last four digits, Five seven five four. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi. Hi. Which... I'd like to give get a public comment. Sure. So you have a minute. Please begin. Yeah, I just want to say my name is Stephanie, and it looks like when you guys said that business can't continue as usual, it was a lie because here we are. Uh, it's pretty disgusting how this meeting has been allowed to continue in chambers while outside this morning. LAPD brutalized two black members of the public. This is the culture that you all actively enable. You guys act like you give a shit about Angelinos, but you're actively enabling and enticing violence. Mitch, you're not fooling anybody or nobody's president. You're another face of anti-blackness. And we all remember what you did in Echo Park. Blaming COVID for not wanting to hear from the people shows exactly how pathetic you are. The people won't go away and they're not gonna be quiet. You all have done this to yourselves months ago with your racist fucking ordinances. The council members that said last week they wouldn't show up until there were resignations, we see you in your seats today. Break fucking quorum and stop showing up. No resignations, no meetings. Fuck you, Kevin and Gil. Okay. Speaker with the last four digits, speaker with the last four digits, 9631. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, can you hear me? We can indeed. Which items would you like to speak on? Oh, thank you. Just general comment. I was cut off after commenting on item 34 about 30 minutes ago. Okay, so I, I think you said 34 in general. Is that right? Uh, no, uh, just general comment. Okay, all right. Please go ahead. Council members De Leon and Tadio need to resign immediately. When the White House says, ask you to resign, it's time for you to resign. It's ridiculous that they're still in office. I do want to point out that Councilmember O'Farrell yesterday during a press conference wasn't wearing a mask. He broke LA Public Health the health officer order uh, that's been in existence since May. So it's a little bit hypocritical for him to be going around uh, on this media circuit with Alex Cohen of Spectrum, with others hosting dozens in an indoor room without a mask. Um, sorry, there's no exemption for Mitch O'Farrell there. Um, I'd also like to ask why Mitch O'Farrell hasn't denounced his former staffer Hannah Cho's corrupt, anti-black, racist remarks that knock LA reported on. Okay, thank you, speaker. 
Speaker with the last four digits, 9986. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hello? Hi, which items would you like to speak on? General public comments, please. Very good. You have a minute. Please begin. Hi, my name is Annette Aguilar from Collective Yosel Maiz, and we're asking for the resignation of Council Member Gil Cedillo, who has a track record of favoring biotech industry that contaminates and genetically modifies corn. Gil Cedillo has outright lied to mothers and food growers who want healthy food and want a healthy source of non-GMO corn. Gil Cedillo, renuncie, por favor. Usted es un político corrupto y siempre lo ha sido. Thank you very much. Thank you. Speaker with the last four numbers, 7208. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi there, I'm speaking on general comments. Very good, you have a minute, please begin. Thanks, um, I'm just calling in to condemn the city council for holding this meeting. Um, you guys need to break quorum right now, this is ridiculous. The fact that Mitch O'Farrell is still allowed to be interim president right now is insane considering his staffer was caught on the same tape uh, conspiring with the same people. Mitch, you gotta go. Um, honestly, it's shocking that Kevin and Gil haven't resigned yet. I think it's amazing that Paul Kurutz is also trying to make himself look good during all this considering all the racist stuff he's done. Paul, you're my council member. Um, I just wanna ask you why you're still making weird racist remarks about uh, Simbalal. Please stop doing that, it's weird. And also return the money from Ed Buck, the serial killer who killed multiple black men. Um, it's weird that you haven't said anything about that and you keep coming to these meetings and trying to make yourself sound anti-racist when you're not. Um, Kevin Gill, again, resign. Nithya Bonin, MHD, I hope you guys know to break quorum. Thank, uh, this is thank you, thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 1610. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Yes, sir, I'd like to speak on items 42, 43, and general public comment. So you have two minutes for the items, followed by a minute for general. Please begin. Thank you. Good morning, council members. This is Natalie Friedberg, resident of CD14, president of the Silver Lake Chamber in CD13 and CD4. Thank you all for being here. This is one of the most challenging times imaginable in which to be a leader. I especially appreciate Council Member O'Farrell's steady hand as acting president. Myself and many others feel reassured by his leadership. We really need his experience and guidance right now. I don't have enough time to fully address the way I feel about the events of the past 10 days, but my heart goes out to those who've suffered the most insult or injury, and I'm appalled by the damage done to us all. Council members, each of you has a district of 261,000 people to guide through this turmoil. Each of you also has the ongoing responsibility of your daily job, which is to keep our city running. I stand with the calls for resignations, but I do not want the business of the city to grind to a halt in the meantime. We're still trying to catch up from the backlog caused by the pandemic. Just as one example, I have small business owners in my chamber who are already waiting six to nine months to get permits, which used to take weeks, just to be able to open a business which they've invested in in a space they're paying rent for. Please continue with the selection of a new council president and with the business of keeping the city running. Speaking of keeping the city running, I want to say a word about the many staffers who work for you all. I'm appalled by the abuse that some of them have been receiving when most were just as shocked as the rest of us by what was revealed. I hope that the public can give them a little grace, especially those who work for the disgraced members as they struggle with processing what's happened and with disrupted careers as public servants. For my general comment, I want the option for city residents to be able to call in rather than to have to travel to city hall. This makes it possible for people to participate who wouldn't be able to otherwise because they just can't afford to take that much time off from work. Public participation has increased when these meetings were conducted virtually versus in person. I'm not arguing that council meetings should be conducted in a virtual format only, but I hope that the new president will advocate for a hybrid, more equitable model. Lastly, I support Council Member O'Farrell's motion for a charter reform ballot initiative to expand city council. And as a former redistricting commissioner, I 100% support the creation of an independent redistricting commission for the city. 
Thank you very much for your time and your service. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 8483. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, Speaker, which items would you like to speak on? I'd like to speak on all items in general public comment. Okay, so you have three minutes for items 1 through 11 and 24 through 43. Please stay on topic and then followed by a minute for general public comment. So please begin with the items. Great. Right. I'll start with uh, 31 and 34. Uh, it's, it's pretty remarkable for members of this council like Mitch, uh, Kern Price, Heather Hutt, uh, to think that somehow they can denounce comments uh, made by the other racist members of this council um, and then turn around and continue the racist, violent policies of the council members. Uh, 4118 is the terrible racist legacy that comes directly from the attitudes of Nuri, Kevin, and Gil. And it is what Mitch O'Farrell upheld in Echo Park when he brutally swept it with police violence. It is what he is trying to push through again today with 31 and 34. It is why he's lying about caring about COVID in order to have this meeting virtually and push through this violence because he knows that if he held this meeting in person, the people would be there and we would shut it down. And I think you just lost quorum, actually. Uh, I only see... Uh, eight council members on the screen. So I'm not quite sure what to do here. It appears that this meeting should be stopping. Oh, now they're back. I'm sorry, what just happened? This has happened about 20 times during the course of this meeting. It seems. So let, let's we'll keep going with the items, speaker. That. Okay. Um, it, you know, the idea that somehow Mitch, Nuri's boy, is is fit to be president, is fit to even be acting president, is remarkable. Um, and I truly hope that Nithya, Marquise, and Mike Bonin are planning to walk out of this meeting as soon as public comment is done, uh, because you're sitting next to you know, pieces of shit like Mitch, pieces of shit like Paul Koretz, who is like actively campaigning for city controller on a racist platform of demonizing young black men. Uh, it's pretty gross. Um, pieces of shit like John Lee, who implicated up to his neck with Englander and city staffer B and continues to be allowed to sit there like year after year. Um, Heather Hutt, who is so clearly laundered in after Herb Wesson um, and is Nuri's puppet. And we all know that. And here's someone who lost an election to Isaac Bryan, got blown out of the water, right? And then, oh, all of a sudden, uh, here she is, a fledgling political ingenue who doesn't even know about all the, all the talk about how, how she's put in there to work for Nuri, even though everyone in the city of Los Angeles who's paying attention at all can see it. Um, it it's, it's quite remarkable. But I think we just lost quorum again. <clears throat> I can't, I only see nine people on the screen. So, so, so again. Can we stick with the items, please, or go to general? Well, uh, if the meeting needs to recess because we don't have so quorum, let's, let's send you I don't think I should be continuing to talk. You have a minute. I mean... Please go ahead. You have a minute for general okay, public comment. Cool. I mean, it's just... The, the idea that people on this council want to separate those comments from the policy that comes from those comments is remarkable. Just end this meeting, make them resign, make Mitch resign and keep pushing for, you know, actually doing something. Okay, thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, 3369. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 3369. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Hi, I'd like to speak on item 27 and also public space. Okay, I think you said 27 and general public comments, so that's a minute for each. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm a volunteer with Compassionate Bay. This is an echo. I live in Los Angeles. And I support the plant-based treaty along with my group, and I agree with their comments. 
And as a general comment, um, I'm really upset about what I heard about what's going on in the LA City Council. They did some really great work for animals and some humans, but racism is unacceptable, especially in the 21st century. It's unacceptable. Look, we don't want racism. We don't want racism in LA Council as well. And I don't know why resignations are being expected rather than these people being fired who are obviously and openly racist. And we want a compassionate find Los Angeles for animals, for humans, for from all genders, races, abilities, and disabilities, general, and public. all species. Please continue. And that's all I'm saying. I really love Los Angeles, and I want us to become more compassionate humans towards each other and towards the city, towards the animals. It's a beautiful place to live, and we should keep it as a as a peaceful place and no place for racism. Thank you. Thank you. Speaker with the last four digits, five six six five. Please unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. Speaker with the last four digits, 5665. Please press star six to unmute yourself and identify the items you'd like to speak on. So, Speaker, please press star six right now. Or, Okay, which items would you like to speak on? General comment. Okay, you have a minute. Please begin. General comment and um, item 24 about redistricting. Okay, so I just wanted to say thank you to Ms. for removing the members De Leon and Cidio from their committee assignments, but that it shouldn't stop there. You should continue with the same momentum and just completely remove them from city council. And to all the public listening to this call, please pay attention about this vote on electoral reform from within and what the redistricting commission will really mean and what that redistribution of power is going to look like. We need to keep holding our politicians accountable. So please pay attention. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much, speaker. Thank you. And uh, colleagues, that concludes all public comment for today. We heard every last person who dialed in and for the record, uh, we heard public comment for three hours and 26 minutes. Public comment is now closed. Um, colleagues, we are ready to vote on items 1 through 11, 25 through 29, 32 and 33, and 35 through 40. Madam Clerk, is that accurate? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, uh, before uh, taking the vote, sir. Uh, the public hearing is now closed for items 2 through 11. The tabulation of ballots shall take place in space 300 of 555 Ramirez Street on Wednesday, October 19, 2022 at 10 a.m. To access the live stream, join Zoom meeting ID number 953-8628-4393 passcode is Prop 218. Public announcement of the tabulation of ballots and consideration of the final ordinance will take place in City Council on Tuesday, November 1st, 2022. And uh, I shall call the roll now, sir. Thank you. Uh, please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo, absent. De Leon, absent. Harris Dawson. Yes. Hutt. Aye. Kuretz. Present. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. <laughs> Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price, absent. Ramen. Yes. Rodriguez, absent. Ten, mem uh, 10 eyes, these items are adopted. Thank you, and Madam Clerk, I believe that brings us to item 31, uh, a request for a separate vote. Uh, that being the order, please, uh, please call the roll. Blumenfield. 
Bloomingfield Eye. Bonin. Bonin, no. Buscaino. Aye. De Leon, uh, Cedillo, absent. De Leon, absent. Harris Dawson. No. Hut. Aye. Coretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Absent. Ramen. No. Rodriguez. Absent. Seven eyes, three no's. This motion fails. Uh, thank you. And that brings us to item uh, uh, 41. Mr. Mr. President? Mr. President? Yes. I'd like to uh, change my vote. I think that might require reconsideration. Uh, yes, um, Mr. President. Uh, reconsider item 31. Shall I uh, call the roll to reconsider 31? Yes, sir? please, please go, go ahead and do so. Okay, reconsidering uh, Blumenfield. Blumenfield, I. Bonin. Bonin, I. Buscaino. Buscaino, I. Cedillo, absent. De Leon, absent. Harris Dawson. Yes. Hut. I. Coretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Absent. Ramen. This is a vote to reconsider the item, is that right? Yes, this is the vote to reconsider item 31. Yes. Rodriguez. Absent. 10 ayes, 31 is reconsidered and before the council now. All right, we now will proceed with item 31. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, no. Buscaino. Buscaino, aye. Cedillo, absent. Dillion, absent. Harris, Dawson. Yes. Hut. Aye. Coretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price, absent. Ramen. No. Rodriguez, absent. Eight eyes, two no's. This matter is adopted. Thank you. And that brings us to item one. Uh, with a friendly amendment offered, oh, did I say, okay, 41, I meant to say, uh, uh, with a, a friendly amendment offered by Council Member Rahman, seconded by myself. Uh, please call the roll on this item as amended, item 41. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Aye. Cedillo, absent. De Leon, absent. Harris Dawson. Yes. Sure. Hut. Aye. Coretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price, absent. Ramen. Yes. Rodriguez, absent. Ten ayes. This matter is adopted as amended. Thank you. And this brings us to item 24 as amended uh, twice uh, by, by motion, one by Rodriguez and Rahman and the other by Rahman and O'Farrell. That's item 24 as amended. Uh, please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Oh, oh, Council, oh, uh, Council President? Yes. Pardon me, I had also requested a moment to make a remark on this item. I apologize. Yeah, can we reel that back? Thank you. Uh, please go right ahead, Ms. Rahman. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a brief comment on this item. Uh, what came out of the recordings we heard last week, in addition to the abhorrent racism and homophobia, was clear evidence that our city's redistricting process was manipulated for personal political gain at the explicit expense of struggling Angelinos. These recordings were very open about their intent, 
to reduce the voting power of renters. Ironically, at a time when renters in the city were perhaps in one of their most vulnerable moments due to COVID. The rights, the voice, the power of renters, including Black, Latino, Indigenous, Asian, South Asian renters were cynically put in the blender and chopped up. I ran for office and I enthusiastically serve in this role because I really believe in the power of government to do good. But I do think that requires us to create governance structures that force this council to act with integrity. That includes more council members to represent a city of 4 million, removing city council members direct discretionary power over some of the land use decisions that exist in their districts, which includes updating our city plans uh, to ensure that opportunities for exchanging campaign contributions for zone changes and plan exemptions are eliminated. We need to change rules around how lobbyists operate. We need to support the work of the grossly underfunded ethics commission. And we need to do a lot more. We've done great work in the city that I'm proud of towards campaign finance reform, but we need to do even more to increase the power of individuals across the city to support candidates that are going to work for the people, not those who seek to profit off of the people. The changes that I have been discussing will address real vulnerabilities in our governmental structures that lead to corruption and self-dealing of exactly the kind that have been on vivid display, not just this last week, but over the past few years here in Los Angeles. Key among those changes is an independent redistricting commission, a motion that I introduced last year following my district's experience of this broken process and that is finally before us for a vote today. As it stands in our current process, council members appoint their own commissioners. They're allowed to have conversations with them as long as they report them. Commissioners can serve as lobbyists who have business currently in front of the city. They can even be family members of potential candidates. Commissioners are free to disregard certain public testimony and prioritize other voices, and they don't have clear criteria to guide their decision making. And once the cap maps come to council, the council has full discretion to redraw the lines, which is exactly what happened in this case. The city of Los Angeles is far behind other jurisdictions in establishing a truly independent process. This is obviously a moment that calls for change and accountability, the moment that we're in right now. But the thing is that this moment for change was here long before those tapes leaked. The call to make this change in redistricting is not a new one. And even after this motion was introduced, it sat in rules committee for close to a year before it was heard. As a result, we lost the opportunity to have this on the ballot this year. This could have been done by next month. But here we are, and it is so important that we finally start working towards really reestablishing trust in our city, moving forward with this independent redistricting commission in the city charter. Um, will definitely move us one step closer to restoring Angelino's confidence in their city, something that is sorely lacking right now. And I urge your I vote. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rahman. Uh, Mr. Krikorian. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. President. I have very little to add uh, to the comments that uh, Councilmember Rahman just gave, which uh, were spot on uh, in every respect. Uh, the one thing uh, I would just say, in addition to my incredible frustration that this has taken a year to get this before the council, um, which then cost us two years in making this reform because we missed this ballot and now have to wait until 24. Uh, the one thing I would add to that is that a lot of the dialogue that took place around uh, the, redistric the redistricting reports when they first came out um, involved the council making changes to the independent citizenship, citizen commission's report. And as Ms. Rahman just pointed out, what we have now is anything but an independent citizens commission. Um, it is a commission that can have people who are under government contract uh, as members. It's a commission that has uh, can have people who are actively working as lobbyists or public relations uh, uh, professionals for uh, public officials. It it is the worst combination of no independence and no accountability, and we need to change it. Uh, the state of California managed this. Uh, in a much more complicated uh, uh, situation than we have. Uh, the County of Los Angeles has independent redistricting. Many other cities around California do. We must do this, but it's only the first step. Um, expanding the size of the council uh, will also allow that um, redistricting process uh, to take place in a way that doesn't pit 
one community against another the way that it does now and, and will result in, in really truly more proportionate representation that's reflective of the diversity of Los Angeles. So um, I join Ms. Raman in asking for your eye vote. Thank you, Mr. Krikorian. And seeing as no additional hands raised, we will now vote on item 24 as amended. Please open the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Buscaino, aye. Cedillo, absent. De Leon, absent. Harris Dawson. Yes. Hutt. Aye. Kretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price, absent. Ramen. Yes. Rodriguez, absent. Ten eyes. This matter is adopted as amended. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Now, colleagues, we will take a vote on items 42 and 43 together. And if approved, we will hold the council president election today. And I believe Ms. All right. Uh, well, with having said that, with no hands raised, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, will you please call the roll? Yes, sir. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Bonin. Bonin, aye. Buscaino. Buscaino, aye. Cedillo, absent. De Leon, absent. Harris Dawson. Yes. Hutt. Aye. Kretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price, absent. Ramen. Yes. Rodriguez, absent. Ten eyes. These items are adopted. Thank you. And colleagues, pursuant to any vote about council leadership, I'm going to turn over the gavel to our city clerk, Holly Walcott. The election of our president gives us the chance to unite us and move us forward on the work we've considered today several reform items that people are hungering for in this moment and everything else that comes before us. In the spirit of our shared public service, let's take this vote. Ms. Walcott is, Ms. Walcott is our presiding officer of the council during this vote. So I welcome our city clerk, Holly Walcott, to the chair. Good afternoon. My name is Holly Lynn Walcott and I am the city clerk for the city of Los Angeles. It is my pleasure to serve you the city this afternoon by conducting the election of the president of the Los Angeles City Council. It has been the tradition of the city council to conduct the election of council president by a voice vote conducted in alphabetical order and we are prepared to proceed in that fashion. However, I understand Mr. Um, Marquis Harris Dawson would like to speak. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Clerk and members. Uh, at this very, very difficult moment for our city, uh, when uh, our colleagues, elected members, members of this body, uh, were exposed for trying to slice and dice, include and exclude, uh, reward and punish uh, not just members of this body, but uh, neighborhoods and communities and racial groups in this uh, city. We've got to begin the work to put the city uh, back together. And it is uh, tedious work, it is monumental work, and we need to get started as quickly as uh, possible. I'm uh, putting forward the name of uh, one Paul Kokorian, who uh, has a track record of conducting processes to include lots of voices, ones that he agrees with, ones that he doesn't agree with, uh, and uh, voices that are in the mainstream and voices that are in the fringes. Um, having worked with him on budgets in uh, the pandemic, in, when the finances were flush, and when the city uh, was challenged, I think he's demonstrated that, lead, that leadership. And I ask uh, that my colleagues join me in supporting him for 
the presidency of uh, this city council in this moment in our city's history. Thank you, Mr. Harris Dawson. Mr. Blumenfield. I want to uh, second Mr. Marquise Harris Dawson's uh, nomination of Mr. Krikorian. Uh, I have seen Mr. Krikorian in action for many years, both in the assembly and here in the council. He is a steady hand, which is what we need. Seen him on budget committee, uh, being wise and judicious, and we need that. And we need at this point, we are, we are in a crisis mode we need to begin the healing process. We need to focus on anti-black racism. We need to focus on uh, opposing anti-black racism, all racism, uh, moving equity into every aspect of our city, which I know is a goal that, that we all share. Uh, and we, but we also need to make the institutional reforms to make this institution more accountable and more transparent. Uh, and I think Mr. Kokorian is, is the right person to lead us right now as council president, but not to rule us, but to lead us, to work with us as a team. And that is the other key aspect that I think Mr. Krikorian brings to the table is both his commitment and his, his promise to lead as uh, inclusively and to make sure that we are all in, involved in this because no one person uh, can change this ship. No one person can make this council function the way it needs to function. We all need to dig in. And I, for one, am committed to making sure that we are successful, that making sure he is successful as council president, which means we are all successful as a council in doing the really important tasks that are in front of us now. So with that, I second the nomination and urge support for Mr. Krikorian. Thank you, Mr. Blumenfield. Hold one second, please. We lost corn. Sorry, just a computer. Oh, geez. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Kuretz. Yes. As the council clerk calls your name, please state the name of the council member you are voting for to be the president of the city council effective October 18th, 2022. Madam clerk, please proceed with the vote. Blumenfield. Blumenfield votes for Paul Krikorian. Bonin. Mike Bonin casts his vote for Paul Krikorian. Buscaino. Buscaino, in a time where our city is fractured, we need a steady hand, someone who's balanced and practical. Buscaino votes for Paul Krikorian. Cedillo absent, De Leon absent, Harris Dawson. Paul Krikorian. Hutt. Paul Krikorian. Kuretz. I vote for the unifying voice of Paul Krikorian. Krikorian. With humility and respect for my colleagues and my appreciation, I, I vote for Paul Krikorian. Lee. John, John Lee votes for Paul Krikorian. O'Farrell. Yes, I rise in support of my friend and long-term colleague because he's going to do a phenomenal job, I have no doubt about it, and that is Paul Krikorian. Price absent, Raman. Paul Krikorian. Rodriguez absent. That is a unanimous that is a unanimous vote. Congratulations, President, Council President Paul Kokorian. I will now yield the chair to you. Thank you very much, Holly, and uh, thank you, members. Uh, I offer my deep thanks uh, to each of you um, for the confidence that you've shown in me. This is, um, needless to say, one of the most challenging times our city has ever faced. and. Um, I'm ever mindful of what's before us, uh, and I appreciate that support very much. 
Uh, I want to first uh, give thanks to uh, President Mitch O'Farrell uh, for having stepped up at a, this time of crisis and um, really done an incredible job of uh, leading us through. Um, this has been uh, institutionally challenging and personally challenging in so many ways. And, and uh, Mr. O'Farrell, you've done a, a really terrific job of trying to move us forward against all odds. Uh, so I thank you for that. Um, members, those of you who have been here before during times of uh, transition uh, will recall that it is typically a time for celebration uh, but this is not one of those times. Uh, the city is not celebrating now. The city is still grieving. And we're uh, working overwhelmingly together uh, to try to overcome the, uh, what we experienced over the last week. Um, Los Angeles has seen an overwhelming rejection of the statements that were made uh, by our colleagues, uh, the uh, racism that was infused uh, throughout that conversation, uh, and also what it revealed about um, a way of doing business that has to stop. And um, so that rejection of those statements has been overwhelming. And I, I will never forget Pastor Smart's comments on Tuesday uh, when he said, as everyone was experiencing this pain and as everyone was speaking about the rejection of those comments, Pastor Smart stood up and, and said, there's never been a time that we've been more united as a city. Um, and I, I believe that, that he's right. We have a moment that we can seize right now uh, based on that experience to come together and heal and, and bridge gaps and, and reform the way we govern and ensure that every voice and every community is heard in, in the elected government of Los Angeles. Um, I, I wanna take a moment to thank Council Member Price and his staff for the many conversations that we've been having about a vision for the future. And um, I will be discussing uh, leadership at greater length over the coming days, uh, but I do uh, believe and hope that uh, Mr. Price will play a key role in helping to bridge the gaps, uh, bridge the divisions that have been um, uh, revealed and uh, worsened by the comments that, that we've heard over the last week. He's done a magnificent job in his district um, of bridging the gap between African Americans and Latinos. And I think that uh, he'll play a key role in doing that citywide as well. Um, you, members, you'll also recall in past times that there's been, this has been, it has almost felt like a coronation when we've um, elected a new council president. And, and I want you to know uh, that as long as I am given the privilege of serving in this office as your president, um, the, the presidency will be a collective enterprise. Uh, it'll be a presidency that relies on a leadership team of diverse abilities and diverse experiences and diverse backgrounds and diverse viewpoints. Um, and it's critically important to me that our leadership uh, includes um, disagreement uh, because that's how we move forward at, at, as a community, by listening to each other and working together. Uh, more than anything, I hope that we'll be committed to an atmosphere in this council uh, and with the public of respect, of integrity, of collaboration, of understanding the perspective of people with whom we may disagree and finding where we can agree. Uh, and, and above all, and sort of underlying all of it, I think is um, we just need to be committed uh, to more kindness to one another and um, to the people that we represent. And I hope that um, we'll receive that uh, in return as well. So we're going through an election right now and this is a time of great divisiveness within our city. Uh, I hope that the candidates who are running for the council and who are running for other offices um, will keep in mind uh, the role that they play as well in bringing our communities together. And I hope that the momentary gains that can be had by uh, attacks will be tempered by 
um, the recognition of what that can mean to um, to the unity of, of Los Angeles going forward as we have to lead. Um, and in terms of some of the comments that we heard today uh, directed at, at some members about um, not conduct, conducting these meetings, I just need to, to reiterate that we just can't allow um, two members who have uh, are in a position now of having dishonored their offices to, uh, by their decision or lack of decision, hold the business of the city hostage. Um, it, it, it cannot be the case uh, that that happens. We will continue to move forward as we have in overwhelmingly calling for their resignations. We will move forward on my motion for censure, uh, but we cannot wait uh, to continue to do the business of, of Los Angeles. The people of Los Angeles can't wait for us to act on housing, on homelessness, on public safety, on reform of the way city departments deliver services to our constituents. We can't wait on making progress on uh, the nation leading goal that we have of addressing climate change by achieving 100% clean energy. Uh, we can't wait to provide the relief that frontline communities have waited for for generations uh, to relieve them of the impact of fossil fuel production uh, in Los Angeles. We have to end oil and gas drilling. Um, and we have to uh, do so much more to, um, to advance the big issues that matter to the people of Los Angeles. But the first task before us that um, undergirds everything else we do is to begin to restore the people's trust in their elected representatives. And today we took some good first steps uh, on creating independent redistricting. Um, we took steps on expanding the size of the council so that uh, people's voices are more powerful in each district and so that we have a greater opportunity for all communities to be represented. Uh, we need to move forward on overhauling our code of ethics. Um, we need to move forward on it. Um, uh, ensuring that we've uh, reduced the risk of corruption that comes from uh, our building approval practices and our land use practices, uh, and we will do that work. Um, we will also do something that you don't often hear from somebody who um, gets a new position. Uh, I will advance tangible steps to ensure that the power of the council president is reduced, not increased. Uh, the era of unilateral decision making on this council and consolidating power that ends today. So um, most of all, I think we, we just really need to resolve that uh, through this work, we make clear that no one in this city ever again feels excluded or belittled or demeaned or disrespected or left behind uh, by the people that they elected to represent them. The job that we have is a privilege. It's a privilege to serve in City Hall. It's a privilege to serve in any kind of public service. And uh, we who have that privilege have to commit ourselves to setting aside the differences that divide us, setting aside the idea that we serve a faction or a group or a neighborhood at the expense of others. Los Angeles can't afford that kind of thinking anymore. We have to recognize that we serve all of the people of Los Angeles and we need to do our utmost to continue to earn the privilege of the service uh, that we've been given. Um, and members, I, I need to say that all of you do that work every single day. And I couldn't be prouder uh, to work with each of you uh, as you uh, fight for the interests of your constituents, fight to make Los Angeles a better place, um, everyone in Los Angeles really is indebted to each of you for the sacrifice that you make, for the work that you do, for the vision that you have for a better Los Angeles. Uh, so I really want to thank you and your staff members uh, who make that work possible. And of course, I want to thank my staff uh, for uh, allowing us to do that work in my office as well. Um, I just want to close with this. On, on Tuesday, in the midst of a very painful, but I think um, very important city council meeting, when the people of Los Angeles came to speak about the pain 
that they were experiencing came to demand change from our council. Um, many, many of those voices resonated so clearly and um, should never um, should should never be forgotten by any of us. And there was one young man in particular who uh, who I recall that I will I will never forget what he said when he commented that after these tapes were released, um, he and his wife had a discussion, and his wife told him that uh, they should move from Los Angeles because they couldn't raise their kids in a city that was, you know, that would accept comments like that, or that had leaders who would make comments like that. And he said, no, he said, no, we're staying. I'm not leaving the city. Um, we're going to change the city that I, that he loves in order to make it a place that he would be proud to raise his kids. And um, there are people like that young man around Los Angeles today who are looking to us uh, to fight for their interests to make this a city that they can raise their kids in, that they can uh, experience their best lives in, a place where they can afford to live, a place where they can have opportunity for success in the future, and a place where they can come together as a community with all of our neighbors and, uh, and build a better Los Angeles. I look forward to doing all of that work with you uh, and uh, in concert with all of the people that we serve. So uh, I thank you very much members for your confidence. Um, let's get to work. Thank and, you. Uh, so with that, Madam Clerk, um, what else is before us? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, a quick announcement, ordinances for items 1, 38, and 39 are held over to October 25th, 2022. And uh, council has motions for posting and referral. Uh, those matters are posted and referred without objection. Mr. President, before we do that, we did not move your presidency election forthwith. Uh, we neglected to do that. So let's move this election as uh, Mr. Krikorian, as the new city council president, forthwith without objection before we post and refer. Thank you, Without sir. objection, it, that will be the order. Council has motions for posting and referral. Motions will be posted on the city clerk's website shortly after the meeting for the public's viewing. To subscribe to receive copies of today's council motions to your email, please visit clerk.lacity.org. The desk is clear, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Members, are there any announcements? Uh, Mr. Mr. Harris uh, Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Plum. Committee will begin at 2.40, 10 minutes from now, 2.40, Plum Committee. Mr. Buscaino. Thank you, Mr. President. Just want to uh, acknowledge the amazing Italian festa that we had in Little Italy in San Pedro over the weekend. And myself and uh, Mr. Bond and the two uh, acting sitting Italian-Americans on the city council, really proud of, of the amazing turnout that we had over the weekend. I do want to recognize the Little Italy Association for putting together an incredible Festa Italiana, amazing entertainment, incredible food, and it was community, all ages, all races came together on 6th Street in Little Italy. So congratulations, looking forward to lighting City Hall on Thursday, uh, Mr. Vaughn in red, white, and green, uh, the, count, the colors of the Italian flag as um, the fifth largest ethnic population in the country. Italian Americans have given so much to the city, incredible contributions in art and science and culture and, and food and entertainment and sports. So we're proud. When is that, Mr. Bristina? That's this Thursday night. I, I will be there, but one note, I'm not an Italian American. I'm an Italian, an Italian and American now. now. And American, that's right. Congrats <laughs> on that, Mike. Thank you, Mr. President, members. Thank you, Mr. Buscaino. Any other announcements, members? Are there any adjournments in memory? Seeing none, and there being no other business before the council, we are adjourned. Thank you all members.
person who's been unhoused, being a person who's been incarcerated, being a person who um, have messed up communities through being incarcerated. Um, we're able to, um, our instincts are what we provide. So we're able to see some things that other people are not able to see mm -hmm. because we've been there. Lived experience is, is the greatest teacher. And what impact has the de-escalation training had? Like when you talk to the employees, what do they say? What's been the impact? So the impact um, from talking to a lot of employees that I deal with, the impact is understanding. Understanding and knowing and empathy. Empathy and understanding. Knowing that 